Welcome to World Class Bullshitters, the epitome of pop culture. I'm your host, Jeff Hicks, and with me tonight is the one, the only, DeAndre. Baby, baby, Kendo, you don't have to put on the red light, Kendo, because I love you because you're white. <laughs> awesome. I mean, oh my god, that's amazing. I would, I would like that not to be the only reason why, but all right. Well, no, it's not the only reason. I'm just, I'm just saying for the sake of the of the love song I wrote for you. Oh, okay. My own words that I didn't copy from anything. That's what's up. See, I'm pretty sure somebody else wrote that, but that's all right. Dion's an original. No, guy. no, 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 no. That was me to you. That was that was official. <laughs> that was that was from me to you. Oh, no, that, was that was love, man. That was love, right? Come well, on, thanks, love, Dion. Baby. I, I appreciate love, that. That makes me feel so much better. Goddamn right. (laughs) All right, up next is the last standing Samoan, Nick Udom. What's going on? I'm working on a brand new movie called Frankenthug. You guys should check it out. Will the the hurricane affect it in Samoa? Uh, No, it will not. All right, cool. What are are hurricanes? Yeah, they get typhoons. (laughs) Yeah. Just don't die. Basically, it's a sinkhole in the South Pacific, so... (laughs) <laughs> I can't make any promises. I'll see what I can do. All right. Well, we need one last standing Samoan. And up next, and finally, is our newest member, Kendo Slice. So weird being the minority in the group. Oh, it's true. It's a very unusual feeling. I would tell you that's why you got a song, but, you know, love and all that shit. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, I am a fan of love and all that shit. This shit. <laughs> So tonight we're back with another episode of Reverend Pop Culture Goodness. This week a bunch of Star Wars drama happened, so obviously we're going to talk about that. There's a bunch of confusion over in DC about the Joker, but before we get into that, let's give a very special shout out to our listeners of the week. And yes, you heard that right, listeners of the week. We got three, count them, three new patrons, and in the order that they subscribed, Andrew Kalen Heights, Ian Marshall Manning, and the man, the myth, the muffin himself, Brian Lake. I want to thank all three of you for helping support the channel. We're beyond thankful. And for those who get one, your digital poster will have arrived by the time this episode launches. Also, since this is the first episode we record of the month, let's take a moment to thank all of our patrons. So, thank you to Crescent Wing, Ian Marshall Manning, Nick, Murat Yilmaz, Jonathan Showalter, Royce Hubbard, Mabius Lang, Andrew Kalen Heights, Brian Lape, Eric Ward, Kendo Slice, Justin Beck, and Chris Kolba. So, guys, thank you all for your support here of World Class Bullshitters. We appreciate it. And um, we also are going to change a few things over on Patreon, but for the better. So, more digital content is going to be heading your way starting this weekend. We've decided that we're going to do the one thing I don't want to do, and that's rewatch The Force Awakens. And you get to hear me suffer the entire time. Yes, we're going to do a, a commentary for The Force Awakens, and anyone who joins in at the $1 a month club will have access to it this Saturday. So <laughs> if you're listening to this channel and you would really like to hear me do a commentary for The Force Awakens, just join up for a buck a month. It's $12 a year. That's like one Starbucks a year because, you know, you always get all the double and triple shots. Oh, easy, buddy, with the math. Sorry. I guess I'm the only one that drinks $24 cups of coffee. I was anyway, told there would fun. be no math. Oh, well, don't worry, you're fine. <laughs> but we're going to be drunk. It's going to be a good time. And um, here's a, a little bit of icing on the cake for the higher level patrons. Later next week, we're going to have a 2016 Ghostbusters commentary. So, oh. yeah. That's good. Yeah. That's gonna be... All of this is going to hurt so bad. It's Jeff, I've hurt. changed my mind. I don't want to do this anymore. Well, then don't. Oh, well, I Actually, have you to. Kind of have to. You've signed I'm, a contract. I'm contractorily obligated. Yeah, sorry, but uh, yeah, 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 yeah. You you owe us you owe us uh, drunk commentaries, uh, some wife. side videos, some naked pictures, and a couple hand jobs. So yeah, uh, naked pictures of me or just anybody. I mean, we'll 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 determine out, determine, determine that off air. So yeah. Just, okay, yeah. At, at a later date, but you need to be pumping up with that. So. These are Patreon exclusives, so they won't be coming to YouTube or anywhere else at any time. So, if you want to get them on that action, get over on Patreon. Now, it's time for the news, because next week, it's irrelevant. So, let's start out with our title image. If you follow comic book movies the way we do, there's no doubt the situation confuses you about Jared Leto's Joker. 
Uh, he's the Joker, he isn't the Joker, they're on the island, they're off the island, it's all fucked. So fucked, in fact, that even Jared Leto himself is confused by the situation. Speaking of the situation, during Destiny 2's press junket, he had this to say. I'm a little confused, too, but yeah, there are a couple things in the DC world that I loved. The Joker, he's a great character, a really fun character to play. It's a big universe, and when you play the Joker, there's no ownership there. You have the honor of holding the baton a little while and then passing it off, he added. But there are other films in development, and I'm excited to see what comes from them. Leto is set to play the Joker in Suicide Squad 2 and the Harley Quinn spinoff Gotham City Sirens. So, I got a question for you guys. Since there are going to be two Jokers in the DCEU, and one is Jared Leto, who do you think should be the other one? Ooh, um, goddamn. Jason Bateman. <laughs> Jason oh, Bateman? Oh, fuck you, Nick. <laughs> hey, I didn't hear you say anything, all right? A Did CGI you, like, Joker work with Mark Hamill's voice. Was... <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Shut the fuck up, dude. What a... That might not be a horrible idea, Kendo. I know. That's why I said it. Oh, oh, fuck. Shut the fuck up. You're the dude that I fucking wrote a song for. What the fuck? Fuck me, right? <laughs> you know, I don't need this hostility right now. <laughs> <laughs> I think, I think, to be honest, I think with everything going on, even though it's a shitty show, you know, if we can't get... Um, Jeffrey Dean Morgan is Jack Reacher. I go with Jeffrey Dean Morgan. I think he'd be a great Joker. Don't you think he's too big? I do, but Negan is literally no shit. The only thing that Walking Dead has right. Now. And even if you were to have like a bigger Joker, I mean Ben Affleck. I think as far as int- intimidation wise, I think that shit could work. I don't watch The Walking Dead, so I'll just take your word for it. And I'm surprised you actually watch The Walking Dead. No one watches The Walking Dead anymore. I just go off of the commercials and Dave Chappelle uh-huh. skit. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh-huh. Keep telling yourself that. You fucking love Rick. Anyway, um, I've, heard the, I've heard the rumor that, uh, what's his name, DiCaprio is supposed to be playing him. I, I'd, I'd be okay with that. I don't really care, honestly. I don't care about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I, don't, I, I really don't care either. I just, I just don't anymore. It's like I don't, I don't give two fucks. Like I'll probably watch it anyway to see how DiCaprio does if he does any good at all uh, with it. And it's just, I don't know. I'm just, I just don't care. You'll watch it for the podcast. Of course, I'll watch it for the podcast. It goes without saying. <laughs> we but, sign contracts. We have to. Yeah, I've read mine several times, Kendo. Thank you. <laughs> I was God, talking that to was Jeff. that was very God Diane damn. and Sawyer. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, was she the one with cancer? Yes. No, no, she's just a really old one. Who was oh, the one right. that had cancer and lost her hair and then had to wear a wig? Pretty sure that was Diane Black Sawyer, chick, right? No, she was white. She was on uh, WWF Raw or WWE Monday Night Raw a couple years back. That's the chick from the Good Morning America, wasn't it? I don't know. They all do the same job, if you ask me. I know. That's why we're both confused, God damn it. <laughs> Listeners, wasn't comments, she the one? Just somebody they got tell us in the comments section who had cancer. <laughs> yeah. Let's get back I'm on topic before make... that guy yells at us. Ah, fuck him. <laughs> we need to get to the bottom of this cancer conundrum. We need to know cancer which conundrum. talk show host Joan London. There you go. Problem ah. solved. I didn't even have to look it up. It just came to me when I bit into a sandwich. <laughs> It wasn't her in the. <laughs> that's, what, that's a magical sandwich right there. Yeah. Power of smoked turkey. You baby. <laughs> the power of smoked turkey. <laughs> that's your new catchphrase. Ah, the power of smoked turkey. <laughs> I'll find a way to write that it. into the movie. I'm fine. So I saw uh, an article today that's topical to this topic, and I thought I'd read it on air. So it's, uh-huh. an, it's an article I found titled, Get the Fuck Out, with 10 that Reasons Why Jared Leto is the Worst Joker, and this was published today Ooh. on HeroicHollywood.com. So would you like to hear the list of why Jared Leto is the worst Joker? Of course. It's a pig's pussy uh, pork. Yeah. Actually, uh, somebody in the, uh, the comment section informed us that it's not. No, it's They're a sow. a liar piece of shit. It's a goddamn pork, son. <laughs> it's, it, the power of smorked pussy. Smorked pussy? <laughs> what? I... 
You know what? That's the show. Good night, folks. <laughs> May the force be with you. All right, so number 10 on this list, that voice. The Joker is a terrifying guy. Not only is he someone who might cut you up at any moment, but he's just as likely to make you laugh. The problem is that if the voice isn't sadistic, the jokes aren't scary. They come across just like bad dad jokes. Mark Hamill is the clear king of the Joker voice. His laugh, his rolling voice still creeps up in my head whenever I read a comic book with the Joker in it. Jared Leto, on the other hand, sounds like a child trying to... imitate Christian's Bale, Christian Bale's Batman voice. Leto's <laughs> laugh is alright, but whenever he talks, he sounds like he's purposely trying to come across as tough. Joker is a tough character. He doesn't need to let his voice intimidate people. He should just Whoa. use his words instead of a gruff, manly voice that could fit any random thug. Joker should make people feel uncomfortable when he speaks based on the power of his voice alone. Well, also, and, and in Suicide Squad, he had, the, he had those fucking grills in, and you could tell that those were like impeding his him talking. Like It was hilarious. To be yeah. fair... Every time Jared Leto's Joker spoke, I was uncomfortable, but not because of anything he was doing. It was just how bad it was. I was like, "Oh, this sucks." How hard your erections were? Yeah. <laughs> don't you mean Don't you mean Ducks, Dustin's erections? All of our erections. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, when I look at pictures of Jared Leto Joker, I think of the Miz or Ellen DeGeneres. Like they, <laughs> there's just something the about Miz. the guys. It's like it's like if the Miz and the Elder Dinners had a kid, and then they they fucking abandoned that kid, and he went to Hot Topic and got all, got all of his clothes from there. And they threw him in a vat of chemicals at Axis Chemicals, and he you know caught that one playing card. Anyway, <laughs> number nine on the list: angry over clever. The Joker, even though he doesn't like to admit it, always has a plan. Whenever Christopher Nolan used the character in The Dark Knight, Joker was slowly plotting and trying to bring down the metaphorical savior of Gotham City. But in Suicide Squad, Joker is just angrily trying to find his girlfriend. He never one—he's never one step ahead of anyone. And instead of using his brain stop maneuver, Amanda Waller, he just comes in guns a blazing. Joker is usually one step ahead of everyone, but in Suicide Squad, he is always reacting. He is a character who likes to be in control, and his cleverness usually allows him to get away with it. The problem with Jared Leto's Joker is that he seems angry all the time and doesn't seem to have any twisted or nihilistic viewpoint that pushes him forward. When, Leto, when Leto's Joker comes face to face with Batman again, he's going to need us to set a series of traps and flex his mind a bit instead of just trying to angrily out trigger finger him. Number Agreed. eight, the look. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> fucking problem. Yeah. When pictures first came out of Jared Leto's Joker, fan reactions were split. On one hand, images of Leto in a suit evoked classic depictions of the Joker, but. When other people saw the tattoos, most of them weren't happy. Everyone knows the Joker is damaged, so it's not really necessary to write it on his forehead. A few tattoos could have been nice, but a number of, but the number of makeup, yeah, sorry, but the number the makeup team settled on is overkill. The Joker doesn't seem to care about performance, even ripping off of his own face in the comics at one point. So it seems a little silly that he chose so many images to ingrain on his body. Um, the clown pimp of crime basically just makes fun of his suits. Uh, even when he's wearing suits, they're not themed or purple like the Joker's outfit should be. Instead, the clothes he wears, especially when he's with Harley Quinn, just make him look like a bro with a lot of money ready to hit the clubs. Yeah, definitely. I did think that scene was pretty cool when she was dancing to Super Freak, and she, uh, he walked up to comedy and he's like, you want to fuck my girl? And the guy's like, uh, No. <laughs> well, I mean, it's it, it's common. Nobody really likes common, anyways. Dion does. Rom common is his hero. <laughs> oh, 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 you got it. Uh, number six. He doesn't know what he wants. The Joker may seem crazy to the outside world, but in his head, everything makes sense. His actions appear random and scattered, but typically, each thing he does brings him closer to a goal. In Suicide Squad. The primary role is playing Harley Quinn's love interest. Audiences are shown a scene that slowly depicts him manipulating and winning her so- winning her to his side. But then a minute later, almost he, le- he almost leaves her for dead. We're led to believe that the whole time they were interacting, he was okay with leaving her for dead. And then all of a sudden, he changes his mind. Huh. Yeah, for, for a guy who goes above and beyond to get her, it's kind of like, you know, once he, once he has her, he's like, oh, sorry, Donald don't want you anymore. It's like... Motherfucker, you sp- you're spending the entire movie just trying to rescue her. What are you doing? Outside of marketing, he shouldn't have been in the fucking movie. Oh, no. 100% should not have been. Um, number five. Method acting to the extreme. 
Number four, wannabe gangster. Number three, he likes Skrillex. What? <laughs> the music video that he did, that's what it was. That's what they're referring to. Oh, I didn't even know that was a thing. Yeah, I, 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 can, I can let you watch it if you want to. Uh, maybe when I'm drunk. Okay. Number two, he overcompensates. And number one, he was unnecessary. God damn, is that the truth? Oh, yeah. yeah. You take the Joker out of that movie and it changes it in zero ways. Yeah. Maybe you have him pop up at the very end when he busts Harley out. Yeah, that would like see that would make sense. That would make sense. Have him just be there at the end of the last for like two or three minutes, bust her out, and then then you're done. Well, that's all the DCEU news that came out this week, thankfully. So uh let's talk about something a little happier. Actually something I'm really, really interested in. So this comes from the Hollywood Reporter, and this discusses the James Bond film rights. So Nick Dion, Kendo, when we do the James Bond movies, this may affect, you know, something. So, Apple and Amazon join the race for the James Bond film rights. The franchise and its future are up for grabs as Agent 007 is being viewed as one of the last untapped brands that could be a game changer. The James Bond sweepstakes has taken an unexpected turn while Warner Brothers remains in the lead to land the film distribution rights to the mega franchise whose deal with Sony expired after 2015 Spectre. A couple of unlikely suitors have emerged. Amazon and Apple. The tech giants are willing to spend in the same ballpark as Warner's, if not much more, for the rights. Sources tell Hollywood Reporter. MGM has been looking for a deal for more than two years, and Sony, Universal, and Fox have all been pursuing the property, with Warner's and Sony the most aggressive. But the emergence of Apple, which is considered a viable competitor that Warner's is now pressing MGM hard to close the deal, and Amazon shows that the digital giants consider Bond one of the last untapped brands like Marvel, Pixar, or Lucasfilm. That could act as a game changer in the content space. Apple's and Amazon's inclusion in this chase would indicate that more is on the on the table than the film rights, including the future of the franchise if MGM will sell or license out for the rights price. So I'm not going to read the rest of it because it goes really in depth with that. But Apple did that throw you guys off at all? Yeah, no, not really because they're like they're content hungry and like right now they were they really dumb show at the Rock where it's like the Rock and Siri. In situations, it's really idiotic. Um, they're trying to become a content creator, but it's like, just make fucking phones and half-ass computers like you guys keep doing and charging, you know, ungully amounts for them. Just keep doing that. That's what you're fucking good at. Just stay there. Um, if Amazon gets it, I, I I would be okay with that because when they do shows, they, you know, they put up the, uh, the first pilot of the first season up and then you vote on it and then it becomes a thing. So they're doing things right. And I think what will happen with that is then, you know, you'll have every Bond movie on Prime mm-hmm. all the time, forever. So that's a, that's a plus. Um, I don't know what, I mean, and, you know, they would be able to, with the, with the money they have, they'd be able to do almost anything with the Bond franchise. They could schedule, you know, the next 10 or 12 movies if they wanted to with the money they have. And, I mean, they already, they already have Whole Foods and, you know, that in their pocket they're making more money that way as well well remember but... this is just for the distribution rights not the oh actual sorry, sorry 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 as far they as i remember the... that was what was fucking mgm over is because when they released the um not released but when they were selling the rights for um what was that for specter mgm says a bunch of fucking strings attached so this one is it was just for it's just for the upcoming, if I remember correctly, it was just for the upcoming movie distribution rights, and then it was just for the uh, like the merchandise attached to it. So, fucking MGM's just doing it for this upcoming movie. They still hold the remaining rights. Oh, they're just, my they're bad, just, yeah. They're just honey dicking everyone things. else for the upcoming movie. <laughs> well, uh, no, the dicking. way it works is that Eon Productions owns James Bond. That's why there are other James right. Bond movies that aren't Eon produced. So this would just be like, okay, so when you watch a James Bond Blu-ray, it says 20th Century Fox on the startup screen. That's all that it would change. So when you would get the next box set, if Warner Brothers gets it, it would just say Warner Brothers. But everything else would remain the same. So as somebody that's a huge 007 fan, as long as Apple doesn't get it, I don't care. Because... Well, even that, it's not for the the rest of the remaining of the movies. It's just for the upcoming movie, right? No, no, no. It's... For like all the back catalog, so whoever oh like, oh damn it's okay. whoever whoever is going to release the next set of Blu-rays or the DVDs or whatever or the uh, digital okay. whatever okay. it's like it's basically like whoever's just going to put out the home, I think it's the home media or whoever 
like puts it out in theaters, but it's not going to be owned by them. They'll get like money, but okay, they, won't get right. the, they won't get to change it. Like I'm worried if Apple's the uh, distribute, uh, they hold the distribution rights. All of a sudden, James Bond's going to ditch the Omega Seamaster and have a fucking Apple smartwatch, like dumb shit. Like Apple, yeah, and then stay and then what'll happen is that you know it'll be all all the movies will be on uh, on fucking iTunes for like you know fifty bucks a fucking movie or something. Yeah, I don't know. I, and, and the thing is, there's a rumored four. Okay, the Blu-ray set has a few movies that are transferred in 4K, and some of them are just from DVD sources. I'm hoping that before we get fucked over on price, that they put out another box set that has the 4K masters, because like Goldeneye looks like shit, and a lot of them look like shit. And I feel like if Apple holds the rights, they're gonna really make it like four hundred dollars or something stupid. Warner Brothers, I to me personally, I think Warner Brothers is the best bet. Maybe DC movies suck. Warner Brothers has the best back catalog, I would, and they know how to treat a franchise. Well, I, I would want Universal to have it just because, like, then you might get the James Bond theme park or part of the park be James Bond themed. That would be cool. We had that here in Cincinnati yeah. back in the '90s at Kings Island. We had a James oh shit. Bond, we had a we had an official James Bond ride. It was called License to Thrill. Nice. Was, I mean, yeah, you you, cool. you might you might get that with uh, with Universal. Then you might get like a a James Bond, you know, part of the park or a bride or something. And I mean, I would love that. That would be amazing. I would totally, I would totally be happy with that. Uh, because I know that T2 is, is leaving here soon, uh, in the next little while. Yeah. That's well, it's not, I'm, I'm not really mad about it. I've done it enough and it really kind of sucks. It's like, uh, the fucking, um, the torn, the tornado thing. That's like 30 seconds long. I fucking Twister's hate it. Garbage. Twister. Twister. Yeah. Twister's garbage. But yeah, that's, that's why I would want it to be universal just for that aspect. And you know, then you have the whole gift shop area as well that you can buy, like, you know, merch there and whatever else whatever else you want. So, I mean, that's a thing, so. More James Bond merchandise is always a good thing for me. I just, I don't know. I'm at a weird point where I, I mean, I care as long as it's not Apple, but at the other time, I don't care because, like, we have the Blu-rays. We have, like, a bunch of merchandise. They can't go back and like, alter the movies or anything. And I don't think these people are going to be involved enough to, like, change the direction. Like, if Apple gets Bond, they're like, well, maybe he could be bisexual or something stupid. Like, you know, how Tim Cook's... Well, the thing thing is that, you know, Apple's got a fuck ton of money. They could financially influence... They might be able to financially influence those decisions. That's what I'm afraid of. Yeah, and I don't like the direction they go, because I hate them as a company. Not even, like, (laughs) personnel-wise. I just hate their fucking products and the, the culture of their... Products. I do, and like, and the thing is that even even their computers, like their computers, are taking a giant fucking downturn. They used to be something to things to revered and like things that were, were good. Now they half ass the computers, and they still want you to pay like you know ungodly amounts of money for them. It's like it's not fucking worth it. They're behind. They're behind on hard drive stuff. They're, they they've they've made it to where you can't even up, upgrade the RAM. The RAM soldered into the fucking motherboard. You can't upgrade it. You have to like buy it with the max amount of RAM, and then hopefully that'll be enough. It's just um, greed. It is, and, and, and like you know, and they're the only they're the only uh, company that like on Black Friday does not particip- participate in any of that stuff at all. They will not do discounts. They'll not do deals. Nothing. I, I, I mean, I'm in a weird place. I just don't want what I foresee happening with James Bond is that after 25, we're going to get a whole reboot again, which is dumb. But I would, I, if, I, if anything has to happen, it'd be nice if they kind of just were like, hey, Daniel Craig movies happened, and but now we're going back to the original timeline, and they could build off of that. I'd like that. I don't know. I want more Bond movies. At the same time, I don't want more Bond movies. It's like, <laughs> if you're going to change him to make him not James Bond, just don't do not do it. Yeah, don't make him don't make him a bisexual tranny with a, with a peg leg. Please don't do that. All right, well, let's talk about... Dion, do you have anything else you'd like to say about the Bond being bought out by uh, Apple or Amazon? Uh, you know, I, honestly, I don't want either of those two. I don't want Apple because um, Apple at, at this point in the game is pretty shitty. Plus, I don't want, you know, it's, even though I'm probably really the only one that enjoys the Daniel Craig timeline, I don't, you know... You know, Apple will will do something. I mean, we know that Apple will do something. Amazon, um, as much as I would enjoy them to be on Prime, you know, that, that's not going to change the game for James Bond. They're already on Hulu. You know, they already, um, you know, Amazon's not going to bring anything new. Because um, who bought it now? Was it, Sony had it previously? Yeah. And 20th Century I'd, Fox I'd, has I'd, the home picture rights or whatever. 
Right, I'd rather stay with 20th Century and then Sony distri- distribute it because at least right now Sony is it, 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 lesser of the two evils is Sony has Spider-Man to deal with right now and I'd rather Sony be focusing on that as opposed to James Bond. Um plus like I said, I you know, with Amazon, you know, I don't think they would fuck with anything, but there would also be no reason for What's her bitch ass nuts to not fuck with it? You know, she she would she would there wouldn't be like a like a, there's not like an old school um, franchise. Probably. Thank you. There's not there's there with if with Amazon they're not gonna make her go back to James Bond. They're gonna let her do her thing, um, which is something that I'm kind of worried about. But you know, like I said, I you know I really don't want fucking. I'm with you. I don't want Apple for sure. Like Apple's probably the last company I want to have it right now but other than that if Sony could keep it that's what I would prefer you know? well just for the but. record you're not the only one that likes the Daniel Craig timeline I like if you take out Quantum of Solace I've liked all of his movies hell I really love Skyfall and Spectre I just you, the thing is they, they ruined it because it goes from he's James Bond it's his first mission as a double O agent to I'm too old for this the in between years are gone right 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 right, right. so that's where that's yes. where I'm yeah, like that, I hate it ruined it uh, yep because every movie is like, oh, I'm gonna quit. Like, fuck off. Yeah, man. that's yeah, that's actually yeah, you're right. I, all the movies he's been in are just like, I'm gonna quit. He's trying to quit, and I was like, fucking quit. He's like, it's, I, like, it's your I, fucking I, duty. I don't, I, uh, I, I don't want to quit now. <laughs> oh, M's my mom. She's not my mom. I respect her. I'm gonna be a better James Bond. Like, I don't know, man. That's why it's it's like shit or get off the pot with him. Like in real life, I read an article today. I don't know if there was a lot of validity to it, but he was gonna quit. And then he heard that Tom Hardy and Christopher Nolan were going to come in, so he came back to stop that from happening. We could have been in a much better place if it was Christopher Nolan and Tom Hardy uh, directing and playing James Bond, respectively. That could have been fucking cool. It would have been different. We would have had somebody like Christopher Nolan, who has the power in Hollywood, to be like, uh, James Bond's not going to change anytime soon. Like, he's going to stay. He's going to, you know, write the course. This, like, trying to make Bond progressive thing doesn't work. He works better no. as, like, a, an outlier to time. Time keeps moving. Right. He's kind of the right, same. Right, right, right. Well, well, not only that, not only that, but but not only that, but Christopher Nolan, you know, he's at the point where you know I've said it before, small details aren't his thing, and Bond is a franchise where you don't have to have super small details. And not only that, but Sony would be like, you know, especially with 20th Century Fox, you know, as you said before, everyone sees it as the last, you know, the last great franchise at this point. And they would be like, listen, you know, just, you know, Chris, keep this, sh-. you know, he know- obviously he knows how to keep, at this point, a series continuing in the manner of which people want to fucking go see it. And I think uh, out- there are, uh, there's a short ass list of directors that can do that. He's on it, and with and with Apple, they're gonna want to, you know, like you said, they're want to, they're gonna want to go progressive. They're they're gonna want to go with, okay, who can we give the reins to this franchise who we don't know yet, but but is young and fresh and new perspective to Bond. No, we don't want a new perspective to James Bond. There's a reason why he's lasted for fucking sixty years because it's not a new perspective. It's a fucking, it's the same motherfucker, and the world around him's changing, and that's what I think. Amazon and Apple specifically would want to change. Yeah, it wouldn't be the right thing. I, I, I think I, mean, I thought. Could, go ahead. I think what would happen with Apple is that they would make it to where like his one of his illegitimate like daughters or whatever comes and finds him and he dies and she takes over or some shit like that. That's that's what might happen. I would just I would walk out of that movie if I found out <laughs> one of his kids come looking for him. Like I don't want that. He doesn't have baggage. But hey, like, yeah. you could even write into the story that he had a fucking vasectomy at 25 years old or some dumb shit to yeah. forgo that stupid plot point. Like, it, at least we would get James Bond iPods. I, I, fuck, <laughs> I, dude, I bought one Apple product and it broke in my pocket. Like, oh. fuck, I, dude, my iPod cracked when I was out at a bar. I didn't fall, I didn't drop it, it just cracked in my pocket. Oh, I know, I bought one a long time ago and it just, for some reason, the audio output just stopped working and I'm just like, alright, I'm done. Hmm. It's like they almost want you to upgrade after so many years. Planned I, I've, 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 had, I've had an iPad for like three years now. It still works. <laughs> yeah, but that's an iPad. That's a little. That's a little bigger of investment, you know. Like with an iPod, it's like, oh, one ninety nine. Get a new one at the end of the week. It's like, no, 
No, I, I, I've, I've still got the iPod video in my car. It's been it's been in my car through the summer and the winter. It's been like in the heat and the cold. Like it's it still works. I guess <laughs> my pockets are so like fucking black holes. special. My I'm Apple just... products don't break. Ooh. Dion, with, with, with you though, talking about <laughs> like I could actually be cooler or cool with Bond if they either went one or two ways after Daniel Craig if they had to, instead of going this progressive route with 007 because it just won't work. Make them period pieces, take them back to the 60s, and never take them out of the 60s. You know? Play around with old politics. You could do shit like that. Because if we're going to live in a, a world where he can't be a, a straight white dude that's not, like, curious about his sexuality or stuff like that, at least put him in a time period where he can be the character he's always been. Shoot him. What if, what if they do, like... Well, my they... thing is, too... My, my bad, Nick. My, my thing, my thing about that is, I think that fits perfectly. The other thing too, if you want to keep him relevant, he has to be the dude that is sure of himself. Like, so, so as yep. far as you know, for you and I to be pretty much the two dudes who like Bond the most, um, you know, he, the thing about James Bond is, is what the decision that he makes is because okay, you know. It's because he knows what he he knows who he is. That's the great thing about James Bond. Like he knows that hey, I like to drink. I like women. I believe in you know, even though I'm kind of a a a, a, a sassy bitch, you know, I still believe in doing the right thing. You know what I mean? So, so even if you do have him in you know what is it 2019 or whatever when or 2018 or yeah is it November 2018 2019? 19. So even if you have it in 2018 2019. If if you have everyone else, you know, worry about the future. The MI six is changing. England is changing. The world is changing. He has to be the same guy that's like, listen, no, okay, you know, no. This is what I believe. This is what MI six was before. You know, I believe in doing this and that against bad guy. Don't have him be the dude that's the. He, he has to be the one person who isn't like, oh my god, the world is changing. I'm I'm so confused. But but you know, am I straight? No, no he has to be. The one, the un, the unmovable object in his universe. That's what James Bond is, and I, you know, even if you keep it in the same time, you no, know, uh, in the present, he can't be some whiny bitch who's like, oh well, you know, mother problems. I'm an orphan. Like, no, motherfucker, I'm in the service. I kill people for a specific reason. That's who I am. You know, this fucking bullshit. You know, don't change that just because you want to be current. If you're current, keep him the same. Well, the thing is, like, take the GoldenEye route, where M literally goes, you're a sexist, misogynist dinosaur, a relic of the Cold War. Acknowledge that he doesn't fit, and then just keep him up. The, the, the audience is going to like him. He's really not meant to be, like, this lovable hero, like uh, like Indiana right. Jones. Like, well, not even Indiana Jones, because Indiana Jones is like an underage rapist, if you boil it down to what actually happens. <laughs> uh, Han Solo. Hans, Luke Skywalker is a lovable hero who does the right thing at all times. Like, James Bond's an assassin. He's a dark guy. He, he, like, he finds solace in these women. He, like, fucks them and leaves. He doesn't, like, form relationships. No matter how much they'd like to romanticize the end of the Roger Moore movies where he's like, oh, I'm going to re- attempt re-entry in space with this woman as we fuck in zero gravity. Or, you know, he breaks <laughs> this woman's hard, uh, gruff exterior shell and she finally learns what love is through him. Like, re- in reality, he leaves them, like, the day after. And they're just emotionally distraught. Like, Bond... Well, well not only that, God, but even in, like... Why he's like, not like But not... But, but not only that, but like in Doctor No, he goes back for, you know, in fucking, you know, in 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 um, um, excuse me, you know, in Russia, love, even though he uses her, you know, he fucking like, <laughs> even though he knows that he doesn't love her, which you know he makes apparent, like, no, bitch, like, tell me what I want to know, and then you and I will, yeah, sure, we'll be together. He still fucking protects her from an assassin, like, even though he uses them for a reason. He fucking still protects him. He try, you know, when they're killed, even in, even in the, in, you know, even in um, uh, Skyfall, you know, they, they they kill the chick. He's fucking, he's mad about it. Like the dude shows emotion without his emotion being the thing that that defines him. You know what I mean? So yeah. he, so so who he is doesn't change when he's angry. So like, yeah, he uses women, but when if he just, you know, he banged the chick who happened to be a sex slave. You know, he, he's like, you know, God, you know, he's like, fuck you, man. He's still pissed about it. And that's what's so good about James Bond, especially if you want to keep him present. You know, the everyone around him is making compromises, but he's like, listen, no, 
I'm an assassin, but I still have a fucking moral code. I'm not gonna not fuck chicks and not care about them. You know what I mean? So that that's what I, that's what's so complicated but simple about James Bond that th- that I think Apple and fucking um, um, Amazon. Uh, Amazon are gonna change. Well, what's nice is though the things you just mentioned about James Bond happened in the last two movies, so they haven't really uh, changed this character too much. But I know there's a lot of pressure on the Bro- Barbara Broccoli and Michael G. Wilson to make James Bond black or something else that he's not supposed to be. And at that point, you've ruined it. Like, you can ruin a franchise. Right, Look right. at Star Wars. Like, Star Wars <laughs> isn't the golden goose people love to think it fucking is. Look it. I'm just a quick response to the people that watch the other video. People say, well, toys aren't a response to the success of a franchise. Absolutely. Merchandise is a reflection of the franchise. When people love something, they buy shit related to it. People, yeah. Now, the only time you could use an example, like, well, Avatar made a bunch of money, but the merchandise sold like shit. Avatar isn't a franchise people love. It was an event that people went to see because it was the first, like, reinvention of 3D, and it was so great, apparently, because I didn't see the fucking movie. But that's why that movie made all that money, and then the toys kind of didn't work. But, like, the Star Wars franchise really exists for as long as it has based on the toys, because if you go just by the movie shelf life, they die out quick. So, with James yep. Bond... Well, um, you said something interesting about James Bond, about him going going back to the 60s or whatever... Um, and I thought about it, like, what if what if you did a thing where he's caught or he's old and he has to, like, recount, you know, memories from the 60s, and it's just, like, you know, him him younger and, you know, talking about, you know, that era of being, of, uh, you know, of the spy game and Cold War and things like that, where he's in a room and he's, like, you know, in my sex needs to talk about, like, you know. Don't do that. Of- I think, I think that, at that point it becomes too complicated. I think right now... You know, as much as as much as we enjoy Daniel Craig, the problem is it's so fucking complicated. So like, okay, you know, right, Casino yeah, Royale, yeah, yeah. Casino Royale was was cool, but then Quantum of Solace's problem was, you know, it tried it tried to be it tried to use the Spectre storyline, but at the same time make him this super emotional fucking dude. It's like, no, like you you know, keep it simple. So even if you want to do, if you're gonna do an older James Bond, like, keep it there. Like, you know, okay, he might be right. calling shit, right. but keep an old James Bond that eventually gets out, kills a bunch of people, and is like, okay, I'm still James Bond. But if you want to if you want to go back in time, you know, keep it specifically in, in, you know, 1968, 1969. Like, don't, like, the whole, you know, that's, I don't think, James, he's not a, it's not like, you know, you can do memory flashbacks with him because he's such a character where, like, you want to know you. what he's, now it's not it's not like some other franchise where you're cool with flashbacks like you want okay what is this dude doing right now in the context of the story yeah he should always be about 35 to 40 you can make him a little older but the cool thing about bond movies and nick actually if they if they were going to implement your idea i'd want somebody like sean connery to actually be well yeah like that's like bond if they had to do that like 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 that's the idea you have sean connery come in and like he's you know he's doing like a a spy game thing you know from that movie, and they, they're talking to him in, like, the room, and they have the fucking cameras and the recorders going, and they're asking him about a particular mission that they pulled up or something, or something that's gone wrong or whatever, and he goes through the entire mission, the, you know, and it's always, the entire movie is, well, the a good majority of it is just a flashback of him being younger in that time, you know, probably, you know, a different actor who looks kind of like him doing that thing and doing all that stuff, and it's back in that era that we love of James Bond. I would watch that. I, but if, if, if somebody came to me, I don't know, let's say all of a sudden our channel was so popular that they thought of me as like an authority or something, I'd be like, well, let's just kind of just make separate movies and not tie them together anymore. Like, they're all the same dude, but let's yeah. stop like this overarching, like, the, 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 the Spectre arc. Like, look, in the Sean Connery movies, he fought Spectre for the first two movies, then the fourth and fifth and sixth one, and then they just disappeared. Like... You know, and he did other shit. Like, in real life, you would take down a terrorist organization. Like, eventually ISIS will be defeated or whatever. They'll stop funding it or something will happen. But my point is, then they'll move on to the next thing, and then government agents will fight that. That's how it worked before. This See, James Bond, is a, as a franchise, isn't like other franchises where it's one story. Like, Star Wars is essentially one story. Like, it's yeah. the story of Vader that co- goes into the story of uh, Luke, and then I don't know where they're going with Episode 7 through 9, but... James Bond's always just a story per movie. Like, they don't... 
rely. You could, if you're going to show like your grandma a Bond movie, you could show her For Your Eyes Only, and then you could show her Moonraker back, you know, in in reverse order, and it would make sense. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I was just, I, it was just, it was just an idea that I that I had while you were talking about like going going to the sixties and that whole thing, doing a period, going back to that period. And I was like, that could to me that could be interesting. I'd watch that if it was like you know Sean Connery coming in and then like recanting a a story from back in the day or, or like you know um, uh, one of his missions or whatever. I think that'd be cool. You could always pull back Pierce Brosnan if you had to. The dude's still in good enough shape. That's true. Color That's his true. hair, give him that just for men gray touch of gray <laughs> shit. You know, get rid of the gray beard. <laughs> Um, tighten his face up with some makeup and you could make him, like you could continue from Die Another Day and then you could do the traditional dark haired James Bond and just keep making the movies this whole universe shit like this franchise doesn't lend itself to a universe it's too old for that yeah it is acknowledge that. and, it, and it, younger it, people, oh it's you know it's like the Marvel, no it's nothing like Marvel no, it's 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 entire it's it's the complete opposite of that, and I mean I, I love those movies as well. Like they, yeah, they're all different, and you just need to make each one different. You make it its own story. No need to connect them, you know, in any sort of overarching thing. That's that's it. It's fine. Just keep it simple, man. Well, starting in November on this channel, we'll have our Double O Seven commentaries. I think I'm going to put them out on the. 007th of the month, as long as they don't conflict with World Class Bullshit or so. Uh, we're going to get together relatively soon and we're going to do every James Bond movie and it'll be a two year build up to whatever Bond 25 is. And at that point, we'll do a big James Bond blowout episode and I hope more than like 10 people watch it. So. <laughs> well, it's my favorite, but it's not everyone else's favorite. Think I give yeah. a shit about Star Wars anymore? No. Am I going to talk about it next? Yes. Do I want to? <laughs> no. Eh. <laughs> no. <laughs> Okay, so let's talk about it. Star Wars Episode Nine has lost its director, and I made a video on it, so I'm going to let you guys talk, but Lucasfilm fired his ass, and I'd like to know what you guys think. Of I'm, course I mean, they did. Like, yeah, what? Yeah. You know, again, it's Episode Nine, but are we surprised? Of fucking course not. Like, they can't keep anything simple, they can't keep anything straight, you know, like, you know, fuck him, man. It's just, it's just ridiculous. I, I honestly think it's Kathleen Kennedy's fault because I, th- I, I I think she's not happy with the way that they're going with stories, the way the director, the way the directors are working. And she wants a certain a certain thing and, a, and things to be a certain way, and she's not getting that, and then she keeps firing these fuck, fucking people. So I think that's the problem. Are we really even surprised anymore whenever it, there's some kind of news comes out about how Star Wars is in disarray? No. Yeah, I am personally because we've never heard that before. Well, that's because George Lucas was in charge of all that stuff. True. So what's he going to fire himself? <laughs> well, no, but even then, when they when they win a different director for Episode Eight, they were like, "Oh well, you know, after the Force Awakens came out and everyone was, you know, violently defending that fucking movie. And then they were like, oh, well, he's not going to be doing eight. We said the same goddamn shit. Of course he's not, because the movie wasn't good and he fucking knew it wasn't fucking good. You know, like, you know, this is this is the second time they've done that for a major, you know, you know, it, it this is part of the fucking franchise, son. Like, this is not like Rogue. Rogue One, where it was a standalone, this is part of the goddamn trilogy, and they fired the director already? Like, this is the second time they've done that. You know, J.J. Abrams was like, okay, yeah, I don't know what I'm doing. They got rid of him, and they (laughs) fucking just... Like, I'm not making this shit up. He didn't do Episode 8, guys, and then they fired the next dude for Episode 9. What the fuck else... Like, what else do we gotta say about this goddamn franchise right now? It's a dumpster fire. Yeah, it is. It's like, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Like, you know, this, you know, oh, should we be worried? Yeah, you should be fucking worried because the motherfucker that they tagged to do episode seven admitted that he didn't know what the fuck he was goddamn doing. And then episode eight, well, it's, it's, a, it's a different motherfucker, you know, it's a different vision. And then, okay, yeah, we have a guy for episode nine. Nope, we fired him. We don't, we don't believe in him. Okay, so every movie you've had a different director. Like, I'm, guys, am, are we the only ones seeing this shit? No, I think, I think, look it, for as much as Disney likes to put on a fucking shit-eating grin and smile and wave to people, I think Disney has the shrewdest uh, executives ever, and I think deep down they know two things. 
They know Marvel Comics are fucking up and they're going to change it. And I think deep down they know Star Wars doesn't have the life cycle that they thought it would because of the way they've mismanaged it. I know a lot of these fucking 45-year-old white dudes on the internet that comment on my Joel. video of the bitch, oh, Star Joel. Wars is bigger than it's ever been. No, Joel actually is on our side on this one. Oh, I know. Like, oh, yeah, by the way, happy <laughs> birthday, Joel. You just you said 45-year-old white dudes and that's I was like, oh, Joel, Joel and Brian. Joel, hey, Joel's 47 <laughs> and Brian Leif is 49. They get it right. They're older. No, but um, you get these people that blindly defend this shit. I don't think the companies are blindly defending it. Have you noticed how they are slightly writing the ship? It's like, well, we overflooded the mer- the market with merchandise for episode seven, so episode eight gets a more conservative release. We kind of overhyped this and put out too much shit for episode seven. Now we're kind of taking it back for episode eight. Um, I think episode nine's it for a while. Well, I mean, oh, aren't, yeah, aren't, sure. aren't, aren't, they, aren't they planning, like, like 18 spinoffs or whatever? Here's the thing. They also yeah. plan to make movies about the Inhumans and all these other uh, uh, companies plan out these long, drawn-out things. Star Wars isn't a, a, a surefire thing anymore. It hasn't been since Return of the Jedi. Yeah. You had The Phantom Menace come out, and that was built off the hype of Return of the Jedi because it had fucking 16 years to fucking stew and make, like, this really rich experience. Like, oh, my God, it's going to happen. And everyone was so excited because they were going off the old shit to that then for an entire generation star wars has kind of just been big but not the thing anymore yeah and and, and even and even even with even with the prequels there were events they came out every like two or three years every three years every three years years. yeah so i mean and and with this now we're getting one every year and that's the problem it's just regular (laughs) that's you know the luster is gone oh yeah it's not that it's regular it's not that it's regular I, i think that you know to jeff's point Disney knows, yeah, we fucked this up. Because, you know, beforehand, literally, when The Force Awakens came out, they were, they were you know, the, 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 the previews were focused on who? They were focused on Rey. Yeah. Un- undoubtedly. They were focused on her. And then when the movie came out, okay, it's, you know, it was about, okay, well, the DVD's coming out. They, you know, you know, uh, after the movie was already released, they showed a lot more of Finn. They started showing a lot more of uh of han solo and then with this one you know rogue one came out they haven't showed her at all comparatively for episode eight like they did the release i know they've they've showed the um the 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 close-up of her with the fucking lightsaber for a few uh toy stores but as far as teasers are, are are concerned especially with it being september they have not ramped up the Ray Train as hard as they did uh, when The Force Awakens came out because it's it, especially at this point we're what three months out. Yep, it's like ninety nine like days or something. I saw online. Yeah, they Jeez. have not. You know, especially when The Force Awakens came out by September, they were showing a fuck ton more shit about her. They haven't shown outside of 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 the scene at the end of Force Awakens. They've done a lot more about okay. Well, they've asked a lot, like you know that whole you know who is what is Ray to Luke. There's a lot more of that online. But as far as the major um, um, advertisement for the fucking the eighth movie, it is nowhere near what it was for the Force Awakens. That should fucking tell you something. I'm, dude, you know how I feel. Like tomorrow night, we're gonna get deep into this for our Patreon exclusive oh. Force Awakens drunk commentary, almost to a point where like I need to start drinking now to get mentally and emotionally prepared <laughs> for that. One beer right. an hour for the next twenty four hours. I think I'll survive. Actually, I probably wouldn't even get drunk off of that. Be fine. Be really fine. That's me. No, but I'm reading. I'm reading a lot. Of, here's the thing. What's different? I've never seen this before about Star Wars. Now. We were a lot younger when episode... Well, Kendo, you were in high school, so you were probably using the internet. But Dion, you and I, and Nick to an extension, were either in grade school or very early high school when episode one came out. Yeah. We yeah, weren't okay. on the internet every day. We weren't fucking reading message boards. We were little kids. Maybe we'd go online at the library, uh, look at Nintendo.com or something. This is just me talking. Yeah, or, or well, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was I was reading like Entertainment Weeklies and stuff that uh, that came in the mail or that were at the, uh, at the bookstore just to kind of keep up with what was uh, going on. But there, you didn't see all these like negative Star Wars press things. Like, oh, never. Yeah, Jar Jar sucks. Mm-hmm. Yeah, whatever. Attack of the Clones was a dumb name, but it was just still like, well, press was still like, hey, well, it's, it's Star Wars. It'll be awesome. This week alone, I've seen. Okay, here we go. Here's an article. I'm not going to read it, but this comes from TheRinger.com. 
Should you be worried about the new? St- or should you be worried about the Star Wars franchise after Disney dispatched Colin Trevorrow from Episode Nine less than three months after firing Phil Lord and Chris Miller from the Han Solo movie? We asked the Ringer staff the exact question. Well, I'm not going to read that because you guys don't care. But I also found another article from Screen Rant that says Lucasfilm is to blame for all this. All these production problems. They said maybe the Star Wars movies have been good, according to them, but the production is off the rails. That's saying something. Like this has never been a problem. Now, is it a reflection of Kathleen Kennedy? I would think so, because whatever people want to say, this chick was not groomed to be whatever. She was there from, like, I don't know, the 80s on, but she was working with Steven Spielberg and George Lucas and these guys, I'm not even trying to kiss their asses, like, come on, both of those guys have made some of the biggest movies of all time. The Indiana Jones trilogy, the original Star Wars and stuff like that, like, those dudes are the most important. She's just kind of there for the ride. That's like if my cousin Joey all of a sudden tried to get into the podcast game because we have this show, and it, and he tried to take over because he's related to me, and the show just fucking fell apart. Like, it yeah. doesn't... Like, she's not that good. She's just surrounded by a bunch of yes-men, like, oh, it's Star Wars, we gotta do everything, you know, this chick says, blah, 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 I don't lose my job. Yeah, and I, and, and I love how Mark Hamill just, like, shits on them, and she has to play, like, fucking damage control while he's talking to the press. <laughs> I love that. I love that video so much, and he's just like, Same. "Yeah, I thought this was this was happening, and yeah, this is you know." He, and he didn't like any of it. He's like, "I thought I was going to come in, you know, this this part, and uh, and uh, you know, say something and like you know, uh, help Han Solo or whatever." And then it came at the end. I didn't say anything. It was just me looking into the fucking camera. It's just like, and <laughs> she's just like, "Uh, uh, uh, yeah." I've seen the video. Yeah, it's amazing. Well, not only that, Dude. not only that, but. To your point, Nick, I think that's a fucking amazing point. Alec Guinness was very open about how much he didn't like Star Wars. Yeah. And he fucking gave he gave interviews about how he didn't like it. That didn't fucking stop the momentum of Star Wars. Fucking Mark Hamill says something, and literally the entire fucking Star Wars universe fucking stopped. Like that, like, like it's b- before before he said something about The Force Awakens, everyone was like, oh, she's a great character, Finn's a great character, the story, the story wasn't as bad as people say it was. He said something, and that literally changed the entire fucking dynamic of the fucking seventh movie, by far. Anyone who says differently is a fucking liar. So, so even now... Before you know, literally, this is it, that's it, this one is three years before the Han Solo movie. It got leaked that the fucking director and the writers were unhappy with the motherfucker who's playing young Han Solo. That didn't even happen with goddamn the the tri- the, uh, the prequels. Yeah. That shit got leaked before the fucking production was wrapped. Like what the <laughs> fuck? What else do you need us to say? These this movie isn't coming out for another fucking two years, and they are already saying, "Yeah, we're not happy with this fucking kid." Yeah, I know. That, when that, does that, that happen in the Star Wars project? Yeah, and and Ron Howard's now like redoing the whole fucking movie hey, Mom, like, okay? again or something, or picking up where they left off, or whatever. Like, it's idiotic. Like they're spending more money on. It seems like, it seems like they're going to spend more money on the Han Solo movie than anything else. You know, I want to yeah. see the fucking money and the budget they spent on it just to make it like feasible or or make it even like passable is to by their standards you know like it's it's going to be it's going to be a fucking train wreck well hopefully it leads to the end of it we don't have to deal with star wars anymore because clearly the quality has gone down substantially oh yeah it's and... uh yeah well it, it's no longer a quality product i mean they i mean they re- they really fucked up with the beginning of with with the whole um, road to episode seven just by ramming fucking merchandise down our throats to the you know tenth degree. Like it was idiotic. I mean, as, as you saw in Jeff's video uh, that he did about the toys, everything's still there. All of it's still there. Oh, I know. But not I only saw that, a bunch of it today. Yeah, man, that's fucking crazy. And not only that, fucking shit. You talk about the goddamn actors in the movie. I mean, even with the fucking prequels. I mean, you had people were going crazy about the fucking um, the Jedi Comlink toys and that whole when they started doing, you know, obviously wrestling toys at first. Fuck you guys. But the whole, <laughs> you know, when, when, the, when the when the when the toys came with the Comlink, um, the Comlink bits, you know, that shit was talked about. The fucking characters, you know, people Ray Park was in one fucking Star Wars movie. And that motherfucker is a goddamn hot ass commodity in 2017. We talk about fucking Daisy, what's her fucking nuts, 
And, you know, John Boyega, luckily, is a decent actor, so he's kind of going off. He's the fucking, they fucking literally put the entire farm on Ray. No one is talking about Ray right now outside I, of Disney. No one. I love. They try it with the marketing, but it doesn't work. That's true. Well, I even, love, with the, even with the marketing, even with the marketing, again, we are three months out people what other star wars movie has this little fucking talking about going on about the fucking main character it's we're in september the movie comes out three months from now dude you're preaching That's fucking the crazy yeah this yeah. We, you and i should be the two most excited dudes on the fucking planet we met two years after uh, uh revenge of the sith came out so star wars had died again so we were still talking about Star Wars, and we were still pumped. But yep. we would dream about, like, oh, man, if they make more, blah, blah, blah. We would talk about how pumped and excited we would get. Now they're making them, and they fucking blow. Yeah, now, 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 like now, you, now you don't want to go see them. You don't want to do anything. You don't want to – you don't even, like, talk or think about it. Like, it's just a fucking goddamn train wreck. The old ones not are that, still not that, but, great. But to, to, to go off of your point, Jeff, I, I mean, obviously, I, I have no problem in saying Jeff and I – are the two authorities in pop culture on Star Wars, and we're not fucking... That, that's me being biased. Unbiasedly. Fucking, again, episode three ended. What the fuck happened? Cartoon Network made a fucking TV show based on that universe. What happened around the time Force Awakens comes out? They, you know, Rebels was about the fucking universe before. There has been nothing extra based on the universe that the Force Awakens has created. Nothing. <laughs> Nothing. That, and again, before you guys go in the comments and go crazy, please, please find me somebody outside of the uh, authors for the books that are paid by Disney. There's, there, there's no TV shows coming out. Outside of the toys, there's no short stories. There are no goddamn um, online uh, products as far as um, video projects. There is nothing in the universe specifically for The Force Awakens. I'm talking post-Return of the Jedi, Rey, Finn, the fucking New Order. Nothing. Nothing. And you can't count the books because nowadays it's, 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 it's pretty... It's pretty um, normal for franchises to pay publishers to come out with their own books. Anything new? No, there's no Cartoon Network shit. There's no. Um, there's no Disney Channel bullshit. Nothing on the universe specifically for The Force Awakens. That tells you something. Does adult content count? <laughs> well, I mean, I'm. I'll, I'll, I'll come to a Ray look like getting double penetrated, but other than that, you know, <laughs> I was say, there are some. Force Awakens universe uh, porn parodies, but I didn't know if that matter if that counted in your argument. But what's sadly me more than any of this is like, like okay, the the build up to the Force Awakens was a bunch of glad handing and fucking circle jerking. Oh, Harrison Ford's back. All oh, this, all oh, that. Not the plot of the fucking movie. We had this mystery box bullshit, which people like Dustin love to defend. Oh, it's that makes it better. No, no, no it doesn't. We, we had fucking three years between 2012 and 2015. Uh, where it was a bunch of mystery box shit. The movie comes out. We don't learn dick. All we do is see episode four re fucking made. Then the people on the internet are so afraid to fucking criticize it. Oh, Disney Star Wars has been great. Disney Star Wars has been great. Look it. Don't trust a fucking media source that gets paid by Disney or is afraid to lose Thank any you. sort of insider information or um, ground they may have gained due to their whatever because they shit on Star Wars. Like. Episode seven's really a fucking stupid movie, but everyone's so fucking blinded by it. I feel like Rowdy Roddy Piper, when I went to see that movie, and they live. It's like I had my sunglasses on instead of the 3D glasses, and I literally saw repurpose, remake, blah, 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 rip off. I saw all that shit. And all these people, all they can do is, even on this website I'm reading right now, oh, there's nothing to be worried about, people. Star Wars and Disney are doing great. Really? <laughs> yeah, like Screen Rant. It's like trying to defend. Oh, Colin Trevorrow is a terrible director. It's okay that he's not on. Like, How, you can't you can't judge that because you haven't seen anything. You haven't seen what he directed, what he did at all. You're just you're just taking it as like they know what they're doing. It's okay. It's like no, the fuck they don't. They're they're, they're but, this has been in damage control for the last I think year now with Star Wars, and they're going to be in damage control after um, Avengers is is over as well. They're going to try to like, hey, we're still going. It's still a good thing. You need to keep watching this. No. But the idiocy in Screen Rant, yeah, he's a horrible director, don't worry about it. 
motherfuckers, they skip, they still fucking picked him. Yeah. So what? what is your argument? Okay, he's bad now, but when they picked him, he wasn't fucking bad? What the fuck is the matter with you? That doesn't even make sense. Yeah, like that just pro- goes to show you where on the, on the level of like producerial content, even if that's even a fucking word, but on that level, they are creatively bankrupt. They know that these movies are strictly made for money at this point. Like love him or hate him, at least George Lucas had a fucking story. His weird ass in the 1970s sit and wrote down tons and tons of drafts to Star Wars, refined it. We got the first movie, changed the world. We got the two sequels, awesome. Return of the Jedi less so. Even with the fucking <laughs> prequels, it was to tell the story of Darth Vader or Anakin falling to become Darth Vader. What's the purpose of this trilogy? Like, when they announced episodes one through three, they're like, hey, this is how Anakin became Vader. We knew that as far back as, like, the early 90s when George Lucas would randomly pop up on TV or talk about the special editions in 97. Like, we knew the trajectory. What's the fucking trajectory for this Star Wars series? It's money, money, money. Let's fucking milk these guys before they fucking die because their kids think Star Wars is lame. Like, this is the last generation you can pull this shit on. I know people love to say, my kids like Star Wars. Your kids are fucking um, a small minority. Kids back in the day were nuts for Star Wars. Star Wars was the biggest thing. Now it's not even the fifth biggest thing. Video games come above it. And then if you even micromanage it down to video game franchises, like more kids are concerned with Minecraft than Star Wars. Old dudes are concerned with Star Wars. People will go see a movie because it's a disposable piece of entertainment. And once they're done, they're done. You may get all these people to drop this money, but it's like $7 one time. They're not going to invest in the rich world because, one, there is no rich world. And, two, they don't give a fuck. Like, it's... Star Wars was a fucking lightning in a bottle at one point in time. The time's over. Like, we go back to the old ones because they were classic and so different and unique. You had great stories. You had great elements. What great elements do you have that are unique anymore? Even Rogue One doesn't have all these great unique elements and i like the fucking movie well and even so with with the prequels you know obviously the original trilogy lightning in a bottle the prequels at least they took characters that we recognized and then what built on them enough to keep us fucking interested the new ones they teased luke skywalker had him in the movie for five fucking minutes because, again, they fucking talk about, oh, Mark Hamill's getting back in shape. He's going to be in the movie. He was barely in the fucking seventh one. They fucking, t- they used Han Solo and Chewbacca in the fucking teaser. Yeah, Chewie, we're home. And it was, and his fucking part was boring, and then they fucking wasted having Han Solo back. And they said, oh, you know, Carrie Fisher's back. And again, they deserve this shit because fuck them. You know, Carrie Fisher, again, she's back with the franchise. She's getting in shape. She didn't look that great. And then she fucking died, okay? <laughs> so the, the characters that you had were fucking misused. Yep. Then you have new elements brought in. Oh, we're gonna have um, characters from... Uh, the, 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 the fight choreographers from the raid, they were literally in one scene of the fucking movie. And, like, and how, say, is, oh, how is that, how, how is that even a poll? The fight choreographers from the raid are at Star Wars now. You should go watch it. Like, how is that a goddamn poll? Well, I don't know. That, that's, that's what's so bullshit, right? Because that was a poll for people who enjoy action movies. That was their pull to say, okay, okay, we're gonna have people who enjoy good action films in the 21st century love the raid. And we're going to get that crowd by releasing it. We're going to say it early on. And then when they watch the fucking movie, there's a reason why the you didn't hear shit about The Force Awakens being a great action film. They fuck, and again, this is, you know, this is me. I love Star Wars. I love action films. Jeff can attest to it. I talked about it before. They got the guys from the raid. It might not be that fucking bad. And sure enough, they stopped using that as a fucking selling point once the movie came out because they knew they fucked up. That's not... And again, I'll say it, you know, for the fourth time. I'm not making this fucking shit up, guys. You know, for the... You get in the comments, they fucking specifically stopped talking about certain things when the movie fucking came out. They said, oh, it's a great action epic, you know, when the trailer came out. They didn't say shit about that when the fucking movie was released. Can we, can, we, can we just have Michael Bay to direct a Star Wars movie now, please? Can we just have that? You might have to. You might have to have him do it because, because at this point, yeah, because two and a half point, hour space battle. I I'd be fine with that. It'd be a lot of explosions and a lot of cool shit happening. I'd be okay with that. Yeah. 
Couldn't be any worse. No, I said you pay as much money as you fucking have to to get Steven Spielberg. Like, you pay him what he wants. Because you're Disney and he's worked with Disney before. You know, you, you know Michael Bay as a I don't think Steven Spielberg would do it. No. Yeah, he, and he he's would best, because he would. I don't think he would. He's best friends with George Lucas. He, I don't think. Yeah, don't think that George would be Lucas that would be kind of betraying his, him almost in a way. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think Lucas. I think he realized he made a mistake that he sold Star Wars. Like he regrets it. And the funny thing is, for as much as people shit on him for the last twenty years, he was the right one at the end of it all. It was like George Lucas wasn't the bad guy. All you people were the were the problem. It's like the prequels aren't great or good even for the most part, but it's like. The the one element that you blamed wasn't the fucking problem. The one element you blamed was the one thing that kept Star Wars what it was. It kept it alive you know? and kept it interesting. Alive and well, like, I, I hate to keep bringing it up, but, like, the merchandise is a huge part of Star Wars. There was a level of quality. That level of quality is gone. Now that Disney's involved, everything is Star Wars, and it, nothing is special anymore. It's like, oh, we well, can get the Star Wars this or the Star Wars that. Like, there are... There have always been, like, Star Wars, uh, you know, toothpaste or gummy snack. Well, no, gummy snacks are a newer thing. That's one of the things. Like, there's always been the toys and the shirts. And, the and one, and the thing, well, one, one thing I recently, you know, with, with, uh, with uh, Part 7 that I saw that I've never seen before was, like, Star Wars, like, fucking Campbell soup cans. Like, when, when the fuck was that a thing? Disney. Yeah. I, I, like, I saw that in, like, Walgreens. I was like, what the fuck is this? What's well, going before, on right now? Before we get into it, though, some asshole in the comments is going to go, well, Star Wars had cereal with C-3PO's. Well, we fucking know that. It's a different thing. Mr. T had cereal in the 80s. P- Branded cereal. P.B. Herman had cereal. Soup. He did. Yeah, I so I mean. I Pee-wee's Playhouse today. Yeah. So, yeah, no, cereals, they're yeah. completely different. Yeah, exactly, exactly. It's Disney's fault. It's Lucasfilm. I just, and it's not like somebody like us that are you're like, oh, you're just nitpicking the nitpick. No, we want good shit. We would love to live in a world where every Star Wars movie is fucking amazing. Yeah. Because we'd all be pumped. Yeah, we, we would love that. We want these to be good. We're not shitting on them because, you know, we want to and we're going to get views. We're shitting on it because it's bad. And if you can't see that, take another look, man. Like, really, really watch them and really, really analyze it. It's it's bad. And, and then you get people like Screen or Anna again who are like, Posted an article. Star Wars has always had director problems. Why? No. Nope. Just all they're trying to do is go back and def- uh, deflect criticism of the new one by just going back and saying, "Well, the old ones were just as bad." No. No. <laughs> Not in the slightest bit. So let's move on to another quick topic. Star Wars and Marvel are going to be exclusive to Disney streaming service. That was just released today. So. And this comes from TheVerge.com. Disney has decided what to do with Marvel and Sony's... Sorry, Marvel and Star Wars films once they leave theaters. Keep them exclusive to the company's upcoming streaming service. Uh, what do you guys think? Um, People are going to the... fucking pirate the shit out of that. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Or, or there, there's going to be a tiny spike in physical media for a reason. Um, mm-hmm. Also, I, does Disney, Disney owns the rights to the previous movies or not? They do. Yeah. But they don't own, they don't own the rights to... Episode four, they may have it on there, but they don't own that movie. That is a Fox movie. So, okay, so hypothetically, Fox may be able to just put Star Wars on Netflix by itself, and that's it. That 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 would be hilarious if Fox was like, "Yeah, fuck you, we're putting we're putting this on Netflix for like eight years." That'd, that'd be, be hilarious. Awesome. That'd be that'd be awesome. Yeah, but um, I think it's bullshit. They're gonna well, I mean, like if you remember, do you guys remember Redbox doing a streaming service at all? Anybody? Yeah, they did. Yeah, what happened with that one? Right. Exactly. Yeah, 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 exactly. Like they tried doing their own thing and like the thing that was dumb is that they had, you know, a bunch of like uh what the fuck was it? Uh Creative Commons, not Creative Commons, but like, you know, public domains of on there. Nobody cared about it. Nobody gave two shits about it. It lasted like eight months and went downhill. And with, with Disney the problem is that you have a fine finite amount of content and nobody wants to watch all of like It'll be like the WWE Network where you'll get it for three months, watch everything, and then you'll share it with your friends, and that'll be it. Or it, well, it, even, even the it, WWE Network is, you know, wrestling has replayability, right? Yeah, so yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, definitely, definitely. Right, right. So you have, like, you, you can watch The Rock and Silco Steve Austin, you know, because, you know, they, were, they, pl- they had multiple matches. There was a lot going on. With fucking The Beauty and the Beast... There isn't a lot or, of repay or, 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 or Stone Cold and Booker T in the grocery store. <laughs> that, yes, yes. The whole milk thing was awesome. Uh, was yes, sir. Yes, time. sir. Hell yeah, hell yeah. But with outside of Marvel, 
there is no replayability. Even with Star Wars, you can watch, you know, even you can put the original trilogy on there. You would literally be banking on Marvel. You're banking on one thing that's been around since 2008, and you're banking on another thing which you fucked up. So outside <laughs> of the original trilogy and the prequels, no one's, you know, th- that's not that's 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 six movies there. You have all the Marvel movies. That's not a lot to bank an entire fucking streaming service on. Yeah, I mean, would you would you have all the Marvel cartoons as well uh, on their service, or what, what? What's the deal with that? They probably would, but it's weird because some Marvel cartoons are on some services, some are only in Europe. It's it's really confusing, and like Dion says, there's a finite amount of rewatchability. Like I've said before, with Netflix and shit, you get stuff from everywhere. Maybe we bitch about the content that they produce originally, but at least you can still get, like, Police Academy. Yeah. And, I mean, and the, the thing is, like, Netflix is a household name. Stay with them. You'll be fine. You know? Maybe maybe not put maybe not put it out, like, you know, as soon as, you know, at least theaters put it on Netflix. Like, wait a little while so, like, you know, people will maybe buy the, the shitty Blu-rays you put out. But that's about it, man. <laughs> Plus, another problem is with the Disney streaming services, their content is got a diverse group of like fans. Like, you're gonna have fans that are fans of Marvel, but they're not gonna be watching, you know, 101 Dalmatians. <laughs> you know, they're you got the Star Wars Fuck people. You, I love that Mar- movie. I'm not saying it's a bad movie. I enjoy it too. I'm just saying there's. Not everybody falls into that category of you that would want to watch Disney cartoons and Marvel. Plus, a lot of us already <laughs> own all that shit on DVD and Blu-ray. So what's the incentive to go and sign up for the streaming service? For future releases? Okay, well then it's like, do I spend $20 on this Blu-ray now? Or do I spend $100 or more than over the next year to watch it as many times as I want? Oh wait, I can do that already if well, I buy it now. And uh, another question I want to ask you guys: What is your speculation for the for the pricing for this? Twenty bucks. Twenty bucks a month or twenty bucks flat? Oh, twenty bucks a month. Disney's gonna fucking uh, stick you till you till you're dry. Okay. Like, they're not gonna if it if it was like five bucks, I'd be like even I would be inclined like five dollars. Fuck man, like wow. No, it's gonna be twenty dollars, and they're gonna try to like put Netflix and Amazon down a peg. But they don't appeal to all ages. Like, oh, everyone has an inner child at Disney. No, fuck that. God, I, I'm I, 28 I, years old. I don't want to watch kitty cartoons that aren't like relevant to when I was a child. I hate, I hate their, the hate their theme parks. Hate all that bullshit. I hate it all. I'd rather go to Universal. Happiest really place on fuck. Earth, my ass. It's fucking the most expensive place on Earth. Oh God. Like I. I, when I have kids, I'm not trying to sound like oh, because well, I got a cause. I'm just not gonna watch Disney with them. We'll watch like Warner Brothers cartoons and. Other I mean, I, I remember watching Disney really, really young, but and then I I found Ren and Stimpy, and that was hilarious, and I stuck with Nickelodeon Universal for the rest of my life. So that's well, not like that. But, 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 but I did watch Disney as an adult. The problem is Jeff, myself, you know, and to some extent Nick, and especially fucking Kendo, we're fucking nerds. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Why is it especially fucking Kendo? That you expect money from are not crazy ass pop culture nerds. They're just fucking not. And 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 again, you know, to to, to Jeff's point, you know, the worst part about them fucking trying to price gouge us, they'll randomly drop the price a few months in. Well, if you join us now, you'll get you know six months of six bucks or ten bucks, right? And then they'll jack the price back up. So why the fuck are those people going to let you price gouge them when they already have WWE Network, Fight Pass, Netflix, Hulu? You're already in an oversaturated market. What are you fucking bringing to the table that's that's different? It ain't enough, motherfucker. Not to mention, even if you fucking put the Star Wars movies on there and people just do it for the Star Wars movies, they're going to watch it, you know, for a month and then... Well, I'm gonna drop it until I get it again. Yeah, and I mean, once once again, people, physical media exists. There are Blu-rays. There are you. Where there are like 4K Blu-ray DVDs, as you know, discs as well. Like these things exist. You can go buy a movie. I know it's a weird thing to do to actually buy a movie and have a disc that you have to actually get up off the fucking couch and put into your player. But these things happen. We're used to it. It's okay. There are oh, still yeah. video stores Buy. you can go rent movies at too. 
Yeah, there not are. Only that, not only that, but fucking Best Buy and Target are laughing their asses off because Best Buy and Target bought a shit ton of the physical copies. So even if this shit comes out, they have enough of the shit they bought to last them for a long fucking time to sell this shit. So it ain't like we're going to be, you know, they're going to fucking storm the market with this fucking service bullshit. They've already, you know, Lucasfilm was smart. It was like, hey, buy the buy the Blu-rays, buy the metal box, buy, um, you know, the, the special edition that came out in, you know, what, 06. Like, they fucking have enough copies of this shit already. Oh, yeah. So what oh, the fuck yeah. are you doing? What the fuck are you doing? Yeah, because the thing is, it's not like they're going to create something that you can't... Like, the stuff that they're basically, like, locking up are things you can get anywhere else. Like, I can walk into a fucking gas station and find a copy of Iron Man 3 on DVD. Like, that's not even, like, out of the realm of possibility. <laughs> that's true. I'm just saying, like, man, if they're like, oh, we're going to have Star Wars exclusively streaming on here. I got fucking Star Wars on Blu-ray. I don't need your fucking streaming service. Well, we got the Marvel movies. I bought the ones I fucking like, and I got them on Black Friday specials where I paid $8 for Civil War. Love that fucking movie, but I paid $8 for it. This year, on Black Friday, when all the Marvel movies go cheap, I'm going to buy them again. And that's how I'm going to stock up my collection. I'm not going to spend, like Phil, who spends $27 on a Blu-ray, like right away. It's like, Jesus Christ, man, wait six months. It goes on sale. Like, everything goes on sale. <laughs> like, just wait. The companies that that bought it, like, our, Disney made their money from the Blu-ray sales because Best Buy buys it. Yep. Yeah. And then we buy it from Best and Buy. And they mark it up substantially. So just be a smart consumer and save yourself. Don't, and here's the thing: I, this is what one thing that pisses me off more than most things. Don't worry about a business's well-being. Like unless it's your own business or a family's business, don't worry if Disney makes all this money. Don't take pride in theirs, and don't like feel like oh I have to support a multi-billion-dollar company. They don't support you. Yeah, they could. Like, they you, could. They could give two fucks about you. You're a sheep to them, goddammit. They will have you killed. Like if if you're if you're like the one guy in the world that has the plot <laughs> to Star Wars Episode Nine and you release it, like if they could have you killed to avoid it, they would have you killed. Like they don't give a fuck oh, about yeah. you, people. Like you're you're just a fucking dollar sign to them. You're a a point on a graph. You're not an individual. They don't give a shit about your childhood or your children or any of this other dumb shit. They don't care. They want your fucking money. Like, buy it cheap. And wait, just fuck these people. And don't get the streaming service. Like, what are they going to offer you that's so great? Ooh, Star Wars TV show. I spent an hour bitching about how much I hate Star Wars. Why would I pay $20 a month for a TV show? And why, at this point, if you're going to have 20 fucking uh, internet streaming services, why not just kick cable again? (laughs) <laughs> right. they, all have com- they all have commercials Why that's not? very true that's really this true. shit comes out first on cable anyway I can get my shows six months earlier <laughs> it's like it's self defeating Yeah, like cable- it's going to be weird cable and blu-rays and physical media is going to make a comeback because all these companies fucked up yeah exactly unless your shit's a dollar a month and I have to get like ten of them I'm not going to do that yeah and I mean that. Yeah, that, that's the problem like, we, like for for the last like two or three years, I kept hearing like cord cutting, like going digital, this that the other. But it's like no, that you're just you're 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 just you're just you know um, taking taking one over the other. That's exactly the same thing. Instead of having a physical cable box or a physical you know going through Comcast or whatever, you're going through like View or Sling or whatever else, and paying them for their app and their service a month to have access to the exact same channels. You know that's the thing. It's dumb. It's it doesn't make sense. It's just it's idiotic. Yeah, I've got a friend well, that is so that. excited to cut the cord. He's like, I don't have to pay eighty five, ninety dollars for a satellite anymore. But now he's got PlayStation View, Netflix, Amazon Prime, Hulu. So he's essentially still paying ninety bucks a month, but he's doing it in smaller increments. So he thinks he's somehow getting ahead. And then he bitches well, about look. stuff that he can't watch. That's on <laughs> Well, that's a good that's actually a really good point, motherfucker. But but even then Thank you. you know, again, as far as Disney's streaming service, I'm gonna keep calling it Dream because fuck them. Um, you know, whatever they come up with, the other shit, you know, Hulu, Netflix, you know, the thing that's hot right now, even in movies, is fucking R-rated content. Yes. What the fuck is Disney gonna do that's fucking gonna keep adults watching? Say what you want about Netflix, but Netflix has Frontier. They have the Marvel shows that are saying fucking shit and people are fucking like, 
you know, net, you know, Hulu is showing crazy shit. Obviously, even HBO has Game of Thrones to fall back on, titties and dicks and all that. West, uh, Westworld <laughs> on on HBO, you know. So. Yep, Westworld on HBO. You know that uh, that new show, literally about a porn movie, is coming out. Yep. Disney has fucking nothing comparatively. So you are literally banking on. Well, family entertainment's gonna keep us through on this bullshit, bitch. Please, even kids want to see titties. Like you yeah. have, it's not, it's not R rated, baby. It's not R rated. People want to see tits. Yeah, we're not even, all members of the Brady Bunch. Even even, even women want to see tits, man. Come on, mm-hmm. get with it. Because it's realistic. Everybody knows. You know, if, if a chick wants something, she shows them titties. If a guy wants something, he says fuck. Like, that's just, you know, we don't want to see fucking Snow White not blow seven dudes. Like, we, we want to see some serious, crazy shit right now, Disney. Show us some shit. Well, there, there's titties. your answer right there. Dirty cartoons for the adults. It's unlockable content. Unlockable <laughs> content. I think when Disney tries to uh, go too far into something new, I don't think it really works. People Hell no. Well, well, I use the example of their video games. They tried that. They pumped like so many millions of dollars into that Disney Infinity shit. That thing has. Oh, the, uh, the, the 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 buildings that have all their video games in it. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah, the little figures. Oh, dude. Oh, no, no, no. They're they're, 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 no, no the they actually they actually had they actually had these buildings, and they had it in uh, Orlando as well, where they you had. These VR games you'd go into, you'd pay like ten bucks to get into this building. It's like four levels, and you'd have like VR games and 3D stuff, and like laser tag and all kinds of things like that. But it, it, like they they banked on it so hard that it bombed because they were because the technology is too complicated. You have giant VR headsets, and you had lines and people. People didn't give a shit about it because at that point you had Xbox, uh, PlayStation Two, you had um, all these things coming out, and people could just do it at home. And not have to, you know, drive, pay for parking, pay to get into this place and play some shitty fucking old VR games, uh, you know, for a little bit and then go home. Like, you could do it at home. Why would you want to do do it there? But even Amiibos. Amiibos were a big thing for, like, a hot minute. But then the only retailer buying them was GameStop. Yeah. Like, like you know, fucking Disney stopped putting money... And shit that focuses on kids. Kids don't buy shit anymore. Like even so, even if they do, you know, it's the same as wrestling. They buy the shit that makes them fucking cool. Yeah, and then the, like you know, in my job, you know, I was reading a book about marketing, and that's one thing I've heard is like you know, nobody's going after the the eighteen twenty four demographic because they don't have any money. They're going to the thirty five forty five demographic because they have the money they have the expo- they have the um, expendable income they 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 are more even though they're more frugal and they want more for their money they they have the the income to to do things to go to the movies to spend on concerts and blu-rays and all kinds of shit like that that's what it is and that kind of stuff attracts the 18 to 35 year old market too cuz i know at 18 years old i wasn't really worried about watching ben 10 and other bullshit i wanted to watch titties I don't know. Yeah, well, at 18, I was in college looking for real tits. I wasn't worried about porn on the computer. God, I miss college. We'll talk about <laughs> Good that time. another date. Good Dude, time. too. <laughs> Maybe we'll put that on the Patreon one time. Yes, we can tell college stories. I've got a <laughs> oh, boatload. Yeah. i got one about a I'll French stick. Gra- I'll get into graphic detail. I mean, well, I can't upload the photos. <laughs> but just, just put stickers over them. It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> How do you put a sticker over a cum shot? Uh, get very delicately. <laughs> oh, okay. God. No, I mean, we'll, we'll wrap up this segment about the streaming service. I personally... God damn, Disney. Like, why are they doing so many dumb things? I I don't want to hate everything. I just hate everything they're doing. Does they think sense? they're invincible, man. They think they they're invincible. Like, oh, that's yeah. Like, and, and, that's and when, the fucking... And, like, it's just, it's just, it's the weirdest thing. You know, we talk about, you know, the movie bubble. We talk about, um, you know, Hollywood being deaf as fuck. There's this weird idea in Disney's part of it that they can't do any wrong. Like, oh, well, we don't, consumers don't know what they want. We know what they want. And it's the fucking, the craziest shit in the world right now. It really is. It's this unbridled belief that, okay, no, um, you're you don't believe what you believe, 
you are going to eventually buy in our bullshit if we keep going with it. And it's like, you are the craziest motherfuckers on the planet right now. Yeah, Disney Disney thinks they're too big to fail, and they're and that's going to be their downfall, you know, because like because it's it, it's some yeah the you know the Marvel stuff will die, and they're going to spend more money trying to get it back up again, and it's just going to it's just going to you know slowly go downhill. You'll have Star Wars that is already going downhill, go even further. That will we'll see that with we're already seeing that with the merchandise and everything else. It'll start to really really dip down, and they're going to be fucked because they have all this money and these plans and all the stuff going on that they have to complete, and it's going to be horrible. I think it'll be good though for entertainment because if you okay, you know my answer, but the, I think the '80s is the best decade for entertainment in general. Disney was not a big force back. Then. No, no, right. not at all. Disney, right. When Disney was at their lowest, both creatively and financially, entertainment was at its highest. You had classic oh, wow. films in every genre. Not until uh, the Little Mermaid came back out. Yeah, and that was '87. So that's almost that was seventy percent of the decade. You were pretty much Disney success free, and I think. That was the only big hit they had in the eighties. Mm-hmm, I mean, Tron mm-hmm. wasn't a hit. No, 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 no. Kids yeah, yeah. Tron, Tron, Tron became a cult classic after the fact. Yeah, it wasn't a hit. Yeah. But the thing is, like, all the kids' movies from the eighties—not all, excuse me—but like the big kids' movies from the eighties are classics. They don't, they don't like treat kids like kids. Like the Goonies. Maybe if you don't love it, you still gotta understand. Like those kids were capable. They were put in life or death situations. You could put kids in different situations and make them more interesting. Now, everything with Disney is, like, so safe. Yeah. Like, even in the 80s, Disney took chances. Mm-hmm. I give them credit. They made the Black Cauldron, which was considered too violent or whatever, and they had to cut out a ton of the content. Yeah. But, like, everything is so sanitized and boring, and Disney's the, at, to blame, you know? Like, they had their movies come out in the 90s, and in the early 90s, I think they had a bunch of great hits. By about 97 with Hercules, that was the first Disney movie I saw that I hated. And I hated Mulan, and then I just well, stopped. Even, okay, then for, even like when they had their Saturday like night like kind of kids movies, those were kind of decent. Oh, I watched them. Yeah, the those, were, those were pretty decent. Like, I liked them. Like, a lot of them, like, I think what is it, My Day with the President's Daughter was pretty hilarious. I was just about <laughs> to say that. That was fucking awesome. Yeah. I love My Day with the President's Daughter. Yeah, because, I mean, like, that was, that was good. Like, you had you had some memorable ones there as well. Like, they were good. If they like, And I think um, some other, like, yeah, because you had Nickelodeon do that as well. They had, like, the, their Snick, Snick on Saturday nights with uh, Kablam and Iron Fruit of the Dark and things like that. You had that going on. You had, like, you know, whole content, you know, um thing going on at, at, at night on you know those channels and i loved it it was awesome but now nobody cares and nobody gives a fuck and it's 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 bad <laughs> yeah because before disney tried to make shit that would appeal to like kids and teens like my dates with, date with the president's daughter now everything's like for like two to four year olds to get them into disney and then hope they stick with it but i don't think disney understands like their shit's kind of lame you can only like buzz lightyear for so long before you realize like there's a whole wide world of Better entertainment. Like, I always use this example in person, Dion. I liked Pokemon when it came out. A few months later, I discovered who The Rock was. Who's cooler, The Rock or Pikachu? Clearly, I want The Rock. Like, you know, your you're, kids are going to find something cooler, and you're going to gravitate towards something that makes you feel cool, and you see, think, like, oh, this person's older, they have more experience in life, like, I want to be like them. Kids aren't going to sit and fucking idolize Elsa and the other thing from Frozen forever. They're not going to worry about Woody and Buzz Lightyear. Like, those things are kind of lame when you hit a certain age and early on too yeah right. also and not every and not every uh, adult like like me i didn't like disney that much mike it's not going to be a thing that i'm like blindly going to disney world and dropping three thousand dollars on a trip no oh, man no and, uh, and 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 one more thing um if 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 you guys if no if nobody really, uh hearing this has seen goonies pause this and go watch it now and also if you've seen goonies and don't like it go fuck yourself thank you yeah fair assessment that's what we got to do for the um, Patreon, the Goonies commentary. Yes, we do. Right at my Dude, copy. Oh my God, that'll. that'll we'll uh, do, look it. We'll do the Goonies. We'll do the Back of the Future trilogy, the Indiana Jones trilogy, the Star Wars prequel trilogy, the original Star Wars trilogy. We'll redo that one. Ghostbusters. Patreon exclusive. Ghostbusters, both of them, and the third one. Um, <laughs> oh God, that's. I've seen. That. As the channel ramps up in popularity, I'm actually really excited to do like good shit that'll be appreciated by like hardcore fans of the channel because yeah I, it's fun to sit and bitch about star wars to a degree but after a while it's like fuck man my sanity's going out the window. <laughs> yeah like, oh yeah let me watch oh, yeah. something good like oh dion next year you and i gotta well obviously you're all invited but we gotta do the lethal weapon saga 
Dude, yes. oh my god, fuck it. <laughs> If I we can start, buy those. If we can start early enough, we can do the whole thing in one day. Yeah. Yeah, Dion, you need to just either have Hillary take D2 out for the day, you need to start day drinking at like 10 a.m., and we'll just do Lethal Weapons 1 through 4 in a day, and I'll chop it up and put out one a week. Oh, my God. <laughs> Count me the fuck in, dude. Count me the fuck in. Oh, man, I, I wish it was then. Okay, so one more piece of Star Wars news, thankfully, at least for me. Ryan Johnson has confirmed who the last Jedi is. Woo! Let me guess, they ruined something early before releasing the movie because they're fucking stupid. Uh, he is Vigo. He, he's the last Jedi. Yes, Vigo. Vigo the Carpathian. Yep. That, that, that makes sense. I'll, I'll buy that. I'll buy that. It's fine. Well, Dude, what we should do is we should put out a poster instead of The Last Jedi. It should be The Last Carpathian with him in it and then put the Ghostbusters in the background. Yes, I agree. <laughs> he just, need, he just needs like a hood and, and like a red lightsaber. That's it. <laughs> Tell me where I can send that money because I want to order one right now. <laughs> Maybe I'll put it on incarnate-studios.com one day. <laughs> Get a copyright strike, but ah, fuck it, I don't care. Who, care, who cares? Ch- change it enough to where you can be like, look, it's not the same thing. Yeah. I don't think anyone's going to try to file a copyright strike for Vigo the Carpathian. <laughs> and Harold Ramis was like, eh, eh, at least somebody gives a shit. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, because if you get a copyright strike, that means somebody really cares. Like, somebody really cares. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so do you guys want to know who the last Jedi is? Um, because yes. Disney's dumb. Yeah, Fuck why not? Okay, well. Yeah, but wait, um, here comes the spoiler, so if you're a fucking virgin nerd who can't listen to this, just mute your mic for the next ten seconds. <laughs> I'm hoping they're still muted, because once the ten seconds is up, I'm going to tell the plot. I knew you were going to do. Good good man, Three. good man. Okay, so if you've muted your mic, you're safe. The Last Jedi is Luke Skywalker. Boom! Go fuck yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Um, <laughs> yay, Luke, I don't know. Uh, I think I, th- I think we all knew that, anyways. Yeah, it was pretty much a given. <laughs> well, again, here we go with the fucking, the inability for movie creators nowadays to keep the goddamn, um, keep the goddamn surprise until the movie comes out. Well, we gotta tell them it's Luke. You want him to come but see the movie? Then, but, but, but even then, you wouldn't Star- do it unless you had faith in your movie. If you had faith in your movie, you wouldn't let that shit go. But even then, Star Wars has never been about surprises or the mystery box. It's been about telling a fucking story, a complete story, anyways, with what well, with, with each movie. Well, one of the biggest surprises in movie history is a Star Wars reveal. Yeah, but that movie, they didn't sit and market it like, oh, and a big element will be revealed. It was That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Han Solo saved that... the princess in the first movie, and now they're back to fight the Empire. That was it. Exactly. It wasn't like, oh, there's there's mystery looming in the dark. <laughs> there's exactly. a mystery foot. That's what I'm saying. So, so you didn't have you didn't have, you know, Lucasfilms going, something's gonna be huge and revealed in episode five. No, they were just like, boom, I'm his daddy. And everyone was like, holy fuck, like you didn't have like, you waited until the movie came out to reveal that shit. So much so that it pretty much had a bunch of people go and see the sixth movie, which was a fucking toy commercial. And that's my favorite one. Like, you didn't have... Like, that, that for some reason, you know, DC got caught with that shit with Batman vs. Superman. Obviously, the Star Wars movies, they can't trip over themselves without showing their fucking cocks. You know, every fucking movie has to give the big... Like, we're gonna show... We're gonna show you... An Easter egg in the trailers, like bitch, make give me something to go see your movie. If you if you give me the reveal, I ain't paying you money, motherfucker. <laughs> like what? The, how stupid are you? How fucking dumb are you? And here I'm, we go again. I'm here calling. We go again. I'm I'm calling it that Luke Skywalker dies in this one and passes whatever on to fucking that cunt. Yep, because she can't. She doesn't have to earn anything. She doesn't have yeah. to earn anything. So she will, she will like absorb his power, or I don't know, something like that. That that'll. That's oh no, I think I think I think Kylo Ren's gonna kill her, kill him. Excuse me, excuse yeah. me. He's yeah, gonna yeah. kill Luke Skywalker, and that's gonna be her quote unquote loss, her equivalent of a loss in the second movie is gonna be, which is gonna be them again calling back to 
um, the Empire Strikes Back because instead of losing a hand, Luke loses his fucking life, and that's yeah. gonna be that bitch better lose her fucking arm. She's she you know she's not going to rather because they again. I said the same thing about it before. I said the same thing about wrestling with John Cena. They've painted themselves into a corner where she can't lose because it undoes the first movie. And even if she wins, again, it kills your fucking villain. They've painted themselves into a corner. For them, it's the less of two evils. They're going to have her lose but not really lose. It's going to be fucking Luke, and he's going to die. Like fucking Nick said, 100%, I agree with him. You know, he's going to kill Luke in front of her or some dumb shit. Ha ha, ha, Dion agrees with me, holy shit. Oh my god, Dion and Nick are on the same goddamn thing. I'm a Samoan lackey, you know, but, uh, (laughs) you know, (laughs) I fucking, shit, I made myself laugh at that joke. But, but yeah, it's going to be, she loses without it being her fault bullshit, of course. Yeah, 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 of course. She doesn't lose clean. That. Hey, Nick, when you get a chance, if you ever find my date with the president's daughter, send it my way. Uh, actually, 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 you know what? Let me let me check that right now. Because <laughs> you got me wanting to watch I know, that I know. movie. And I want to listen to the theme song really bad. I know, the theme song. Now, is that the one with Katie Holmes? No, it's some other girl. Okay. But it's the one with Will Friedel. Oh, is that Amanda Bynes with that, in that one? You're thinking of First Daughter. Oh, thank you. That's right. That's right. This movie had Will Friedle, Dabney Coleman, and Elizabeth Harnoy or Hanois. That's who played the president's daughter. Yeah, she was okay. actually pretty cute. Fucking Will Friedle. Yeah, Talk about a fucking. Franchise. Yeah, he, he was. Yeah, he was. He was the guy uh, playing the playing the guy who was wanted to date her. So yeah, that was that was pretty hilarious. That God was right it, around Eric. the time he played Batman. Come on, Eric. Yeah. What the fuck. God, he was so great on that show. He that's that's what hurts me is that motherfucker oh. was fantastic. He's the only character I like on Boy Meets World as an adult. Uh, well, you know, I, I like um, fucking the penguin because I want a fucking titty fucker, but that's just me. <laughs> that's a di- there's a difference between liking someone and being attracted. I'm attracted to my gym manager. I can't stand her when I hear her talk. So it's, <laughs> you know, they're completely different things. That's a good point. That's a good point. Uh, oh God! What? Wait, hold on. We're holding. Uh, co- oh fuck! They have a used version of the VHS tape for fifty bucks. Yeah, what? that movie's hard to fucking. That find. VHS. I, 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 I've got VHS tapes before. I can do it again. Um, I don't yeah. want to, but I will if I have to. <laughs> <laughs> you know it, man. You know it. <laughs> Yeah, I God, I might, I might do that. I, I might have to do that. That's probably going to happen. So here we go. Here's uh, here's a quick piece of news I just found right now. I thought it would be saddening. Um, Toys R Us eyes potential bankruptcy filing. What? They owe five billion dollars, four hundred million of which is due by next year. A lot of money. Oh my God. Yeah. Now, listeners, if you donate that kind of money to us on Patreon, we promise we'll never have to file for bankruptcy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> None of us ever. If four guys can blow five billion dollars, we get an award, and I don't want that award. I just want the fucking money. <laughs> I think I, I, I think the award is dialysis. <laughs> At that point, Dion, you'll have to quit your job. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Shit, dude! If the Patreon got big enough where we could afford it, like everyone would have to quit. Not have to right away, but like. If it was making that kind of money consistently, I'd be like, "Well, we gotta make a TV show now." And then, Seriously, like we'd have to fucking, we'd have to like buckle down and be legit and stuff. And it's just like, oh, fuck. <laughs> you know, I gotta well, it's fuck. like, well, it's like you have so many vacation days to make the movie, which is great. Right. Because we'll just, you know, we'll figure it out. We'll be like, okay, we need to get to St. Louis. We got like nine days to make this fucking thing. We'll write out. We can get everyone else done. But it's like, you know, when it comes down to a TV show, it's like, fuck, man, we gotta produce all this by. In six months, we have to have twelve episodes done. Like exactly. nothing else would matter at that point. We'd have to fucking God. I can't wait for that to happen. Well, no, I mean, it, that, that, like well, the, the thing you have to always worry about is like getting it shot. Getting it edited is easy. Well, we'll get it shot. Getting you know, getting twelve. But you, you probably do see twelve episodes. Yeah, probably in like a month. Like working. You shoot twelve episodes in one month. Yeah, definitely. You're talking uh, twelve hour days, five days, maybe six days a week for a month. Yeah, you could do it. I'd be willing to do that because that way, once the money came, 
Yeah, and then and then and then yeah. you just you know then just editing is the is the problem, and in the end you just have to edit it down and make sure it's all concise, everything looks good, colors good, music, whatever, everything else, and then just put it out as as you want. That's it. <laughs> I'm looking forward to putting it on my resume. <laughs> I was a world class bullshit for a decade. Yeah, why do you need a new job? Insurance. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not, not, I got money. Not good I just enough need benefits. Yeah. There are no benefits. Sorry, I can't offer those. <laughs> So, uh, Nick, did you have a piece of news? Uh, yes, I did. It's about the Millennium Falcon and uh, its appearance in the Han Solo movie. Oh, uh, fuck. <laughs> Sounds like good news. <laughs> yeah, apparently, you you will see it in the movie, but it will be piloted and owned by Lando Calrissian. Um, oh. and yeah, that's and, and and apparently it's gonna it's gonna be uh it's gonna have a a paint a new paint job or a brand new paint job one that we haven't seen it's gonna be white it's gonna be a white coat of paint with a blue markings on it it's gonna be it's gonna look like a piece of Revenge of the Sith concept art that they did way back. Um, that's actually in Revenge of the Sith if you look closely. Yeah, it's it's gonna it's gonna look like that. That's what they want it to look like because you know it's been through battles and space and. Things and asteroids and stuff, so the paint is kind of worn off and stuff. It's in space balls too. That's not horrible, actually. That's not horrible. Yeah, yeah. That's the first piece of Star Wars news I've heard in like two years that I'm excited about. <laughs> yeah, there's also uh, a photo that Ron Howard's released where it looks like there's a, a brawl in the cantina with, uh, well, in the movie, anyways. I swear to God, though, if this movie ends at A New Hope, I'm gonna fucking. I'm going to kick the nearest child in my face. <laughs> I don't care. Man, I and then I'm going to run out and record a podcast and admit guilt over the internet, and no one will find me. <laughs> it's almost yes. worth going to the theater to watch it with you just to see you kick a child. Oh, dude, I'm going to pick the smallest kid, and I'm going to get like, I'm going to start working on my legs, like my quads and shit. I'm like, I'm going to squat a thousand pounds like Garrett just so I can kick a baby like 20 yards. Pick that thing up and just amazing. fucking punt it. <laughs> <laughs> kick the baby. Don't kick the baby. I'm cool with that. You got any more news? or? That's it, man. No, man. That's it. That's all I got. All right, Kendo Slice. All right, I got a couple things. Uh, first one is back to Suicide Squad. Suicide Squad 2 has a writer and director now. Apparently this came out earlier today. Uh, Gavin O'Connor of The Accountant and The Warrior has stepped in to write and direct the movie. So. Does anyone remember the movie The Warrior? Is it just, which was that? Is that the fighting movie with Kurt Angle? I have no idea. Yeah, Warrior. Warrior was the movie with uh, with Kurt Angle and Tom Hardy. Oh, okay. Yeah. So. All right. <laughs> yeah. That's that movie made. I don't know. It had a box office of twenty three point one million dollars, and I'm looking for the. Uh, or no, that was, yeah. Oh wow, it was a flop. Never mind. Yeah. Apparently, Mel Gibson was also rumored for the directing role, but they gave it to Gavin O'Connor. Should have been. Should have been. I'm willing to for. I'm willing to forgive. Yep. And then. Um, and if you're a fan of the movie and or book of One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, Netflix is going to have their own spinoff series uh, produced by Ryan Murphy and ser- starring Sarah Paulson. She was in uh, People vs. O.J. Simpson, and she's in pretty much every episode of American Horror Story. Um, it's about Nurse Ratchet set in 1947. So it's going to be like, a, I guess, a prequel to when uh, Jack Nicholson is supposed to show up in the asylum. I love the movie and I enjoy the book, but I have absolutely no interest in this. I can skip it wholeheartedly. Yeah, that sounds like a piece of shit. Yeah, it's it's going to be. I'm actually super excited for this. I'm just like you know, I again. It sounds like it. I just <laughs> shut up. <laughs> I can, I can like, tell you're struggling to contain yourself. You know what? You know what? Don't don't know me, sir. You don't know me, sir. Stifle the erection, Dion. Um, but it's it's interesting. I want to see, like, I'm 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 assuming, and this is me being a dumb fucking dude who pays attention to movies and stories. But I want to see, like, like hopefully she's a good nurse, and then she becomes this evil fucking cunt that's evil as fuck. I'm I want to see that shit. I just want to see. I, Big I Chief. like I like stuff happening. And not having to see it, like I don't need to know why Egon's kind of eccentric in Ghostbusters. It just it, he just is. Like it, it ruins the mystique of the original movie. Like it brings too much to the table. It's like, oh, now we know why James Bond can't love women. 
because he once lost one, blah, blah, blah. And, and it ruins the character <laughs> from the jump. It's like, oh, well, now I know he's just got mommy issues or whatever. So now Nurse Ratchet, oh, she had an abusive husband or she lost her boyfriend in World War II or something like, oh, <laughs> yay. And plus this chick is not going to be able to compare to the original lady. Well, obviously, if they do it that way, it's going to be this overblown bullshit. But if they do like, you know, she had a previous patient – that was crazy and couldn't was uncontrollable or a series of that. You know, if, if you keep it within the realm of the original movie where it's about patients, nurses, mental illness, crazy shit. But if you bring in, you know, an abusive husband or, you know, her mom dies, there's things that were not mentioned at all in the original movie, then I'm gonna have a problem with it. But if you keep it within, you know, the tools that they brought in with the with with the original I'm all for it, man. Like, if, if it's strictly about her as a nurse, fucking, let's do it. Let's let's see what the fuck happens. Man, she did not age well, Nurse Ratchet. Mm-mm. No, she Before was. Before she was even in the movie, she was actually all right looking. I'll send you this photo. And then obviously we know what she looks like in the movie, and now she looks like everyone's like creepy grandma. Yeah. Like here in this photo I'm sending to you guys, I'm not saying she's like this hot woman, but she's all right looking. Serviceable. And then this is what she looks like nowadays. It's kind of a. Uh, it's like the what was her name Colleen Kemp. That is the worst one. Yeah. Ever. Get you! yeah. She turned into Job of the Hut. Yeah. <laughs> God, that the, the, when you when you did that, and I looked at her picture. I was like that that could come out of that mouth. That that noise, that could happen. I kind of want to watch Return of the Jedi now. (laughs) Maybe I'll pop it on after the podcast. There you go. (laughs) Bring me Solo and the Wookiee. They will pay for this outrage. God, I know that movie way too well. Um, Kendo, what else? I've got got? a special story that I pulled aside just for you, Jeff. Dwayne The Rock Johnson met a Michigan boy who was being hailed as a hero for saving his toddler brother from drowning by using skills he learned from watching one of the actor's films. I saw that yesterday. You know what I said? Fuck The Rock. <laughs> I turned off the TV. Wow, really? I've... Okay, never mind then. Uh, he, this kid watched <laughs> San Andreas, learned how to do CPR, and he saved his brother, and The Rock said he was all heroic and wants to you know, shake his hand and... All right, never mind. The story isn't worth anything then, since you did not appreciate it. <laughs> Fuck you. I mean, it's a it's a great story that the kid saved his brother's life and all that. It's it's just a PR story for me, and uh, I like him as a wrestler. I don't really give a shit about the guy. Like, cool. It's nice that you do nice stuff, but you also do dumb shit like make movies with Siri. Like, you're kind of a self aware joke at this point, and I'm getting tired. Yeah, of he's cashing big paychecks. That's great, but I mean, he doesn't have any artistic integrity. He never has. Yeah, his his most dramatic role right now is Ballers. Yeah, and I and I here's the thing: Stallone and Schwarzenegger may be maybe pegged as action heroes, but Rocky has a lot of depth. Fucking the first Rambo, First Blood. There's a lot of drama, in this <laughs> movie, especially movie. at the end with him and was a Colonel Troutman. Mm-hmm. Yeah. When has The Rock ever had that? The Rock, the Rock is like a real life cartoon character. <laughs> <laughs> like he wears the same clothes every day and he gets injured but he comes right back at, you know like I'm sure he's a great dude and uh, Dion knows how much I like The Rock but god just stop man just he needs to quit, needs to quit doing movies with media. um with fucking Kevin Hart that's the problem well we got Jumanji this year so or is that next Ugh, that's this year don't remind me it's happening Dion it's happening shut up shut up shut it's up it's happening it's happening. I, 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 it's happening. Fuck you. <laughs> Fuck you. What was that effect? I, 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 I don't know. Me, me trying to be annoying. Um, yeah, December 20th, it's coming out. Ooh, God Dude. damn it. <laughs> Five days after Star Wars? That's a fuck. Yep. <laughs> Just, and listeners, tell me if you're excited in the comments about... Uh, I almost said Transformers. I know the answer is no. No. Jumanji. <laughs> the answer is no to that, too. Well, well, you know what? Yeah. Fuck it. Fuck it. You know, you brought up Transformers. 
that's a great fucking segue, sir, because I'm fucking tired of this shit. I am tired of, oh, you know, one thing was successful. We have to make a fucking franchise. Like, listen, I understand that The Rock isn't, like, part of a single franchise outside of Fast and the Furious right now. But just because the motherfucker was somewhat like, somewhat, and I'm saying that fucking term likely, somewhat likable <laughs> with Kevin Hart, doesn't fucking mean I want to see four fucking movies with the motherfucker, the two of them laughing and giggling and all that fucking bullshit. That's, that's, that's bullshit, okay? Because I don't care, man. I have a fucking mindset, a fucking world built around He's the fucking people's champion, but here's this goddamn giant half-black motherfucker running around with this goddamn gazelle of a midget fucking laughing and <laughs> eating and ha ha That's fucking bullshit. Not to mention, not to me- don't fucking insult my intelligence with the fact that, oh, it's a video game now. Fuck you, Juma. Fuck you. That's fucking bullshit. Oh, Universal. Hey, remember when it was a board game? Hey, it's the 21st century. Robin Williams is dead. It's a fucking video game now. That doesn't make any goddamn fucking sense. How does a fucking sentient board game become a fucking video game with The Rock and Kevin? Hey, I'm so funny, Hart. Fuck you. That's Aliens. Bullshit. Aliens, that, that, fucking, that doesn't. I don't want to see that bull, and I get it. Hey, The Rock and Kevin Hart made Snapchats and Instagram videos together. I don't fucking care. Kevin Hart's ruined his goddamn part with me, and The Rock's starting to fucking make my dick soft. I don't want to fucking see this on. shit. I'm done. You, I'm fucking. You just pin- <laughs> but you just pinpointed a problem with movies. It's all about the Snapchats and the tweets and the interaction between these famous people. No effort goes into the fucking product, and everything's disposable. That's yes. why when you want to make a fucking classic movie, you got to put a bunch yeah, of people like, in it that no one fucking like, knows. Like, like Bay- Baywatch, Baywatch had potential to be hilarious, but it wasn't. And it wasn't. <clears throat> that, that was the first time that I was really like unimpressed with him as a, in a movie. Like, yeah, I saw Southland Tales, but the whole movie sucked, so I wasn't like banking on The Rock to carry it. I was more interested in Zac Efron's character in Baywatch than I was The Rock's. Oh, I I refuse to go watch it because the minute where they made it about The Rock versus Zac Efron, I was like, everyone with a fucking brain and a working dick or vagina are going to tell you, hey, The Rock fucking wins, bro. Who the fuck believes... Who the fuck believes that Zac Efron won a gold fucking medal? Not a goddamn fucking person believes that Zac High School Musical Efron could beat The Rock. He couldn't beat The Rock in a fucking spelling contest, let alone a goddamn... I don't know about that one. The Rock doesn't seem that smart. All I'm saying is when you're going in Zac Efron, you've got a fucking advantage, buddy. Like, fuck... That's fucking stupid... that movie pissed me off in principle, sir. That's bullshit. <laughs> that is bullshit. You're not missing out on anything. Yeah, you're really not. It's not a big deal. Yeah, like, really. like, literally, my life is not different not watching that movie, and that pisses me off. I should be excited for a rock movie, and I and again, I gave him a shit for fucking Tooth Fairy in the goddamn Witch Mountain, rightfully so. Oh yeah, you did, and you gave it to me too for not even seeing that. Uh, and, and, I and did. Don't forget, don't forget game plan. That's true. Uh, That's game, plan, true. game plan wasn't that bad. I hate I hate to admit it. <laughs> okay, all right, all right, all right. Then, then, then Hercules, then. Hey, I skipped Hercules that. was good. I actually liked Hercules a lot. But what, fucking what is Z- The Rock's best movie in your eyes, Dion? Ooh, Walking Tall, hands down. Ooh, yep, yep. Uh, I'm going to go with, what was that one he was in? The drug one. Uh, Pain Game? Faster. No, the one where he's his son, Snitch. Snitch, okay. Oh, that was a good one. That was a good one. That was a good one. Baywatch was garbage. I refused to watch Moana. Central Intelligence has got Kevin Hart, so I'm not going to watch it. It's, it's shit. It's shit. I hated San Andreas. I thought that was like a modern-day volcano. And I like volcano, but this... <laughs> God damn it. Has, has anybody Andreas. seen Empire State with him in it? What is it? No, that's a that's a that's a Walmart. Is that what it was? It's Empire State. I'm looking at it right now. Oh, the one with um Thor's or um Chris Hemsworth's brother or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Liam. I did watch that movie. It's not that like literally they were like, "Hey, the rocks in this." That movie was not that fucking good. It was <laughs> I like Pain and Gain a lot. 
it was put together weird because it's like, hey, The Rock's in it, but Liam Hensworth is our fucking lead, and we're just like, and you're watching the movie, you're just like, the fuck, why? It was weird. He's been in some. He's been in some garbage. Like he was in, uh, what was that? I just clicked on it. Get Smart. I hated that movie. You know, Get Smart. He I was gotta, the best part of that like movie because fucking Steve Carell was by far the problem with that film for sure. Yep. Oh, I wasn't saying oh, yeah. him. I just hated the whole movie. Like <laughs> it was bad. not Don Adams. It was or bad. Don Adam. I mean. You know what? I like you know what? Go started. through his whole filmography, Jeff. We're going to get I am. the rock. Okay, fine. Dude. I'm looking at it right here. Let's do it. Let's do it. Okay. We got Baywatch, Moana, Central Intelligence, San Andreas, Hercules, Furious 7, The Fate of the Furious, Fast 5, Pain and Gain, The Scorpion King, Fast and Furious 6, Snitch, Walking Tall, The Game Plan, G.I. Joe Retaliation. No one cares about that. Gridiron Gang, The Mummy Returns, Journey to the Mysterious Island, which I actually kind of liked. Kit Smart, Jumanji, Welcome to the Jungle, Race to Witch Mountain, The Other Guys, Be Cool, Doom, The Tooth Fairy, Southland Tale, ugh, Planet 51, Empire State, and then he's got Rampage. The Rock was in the movie called Long Shot, apparently, in 2001. Damn. Um, I don't even know what that is. And he's in the Journey 3 movie. You know, Rocky... I love you, man. I do. But you got to fucking make some better decisions, buddy. Because outside of... And, and again, even... Um, um, fuck, what, did, what one did you just say that I actually liked? Fuck, it was... Oh, God, I just can't believe it. That's the problem! I forget your movies, <laughs> motherfucker. What is your fucking problem, dude? Come on with that bullshit. He's just a celebrity. He does. He's not a good actor. He's just famous because he's the Rock. That's true. That's true. He's. He. I mean, I'm not trying to sound too too harsh, but like he doesn't bring anything great to the table. He just brings. Oh, it's got the Rock in it, and I love the Rock as a wrestler. Like in my eyes, no one was better or more entertaining ever on a television screen outside of wrestling included. But like, there's just like every other actor in his movie seems to be better prepared. Like, in San Andreas, he was like G.I., like a cardboard cutout of a human being. Like, his characters don't have flaws, they're not interesting. Oh, I was fat in Central Intelligence. Yay, so what, dude? Like, you're just not interesting. You basically are yourself in every movie. Maybe in Pain and Game, when he did cocaine and shot his toe off, did I Yeah, enjoy it, but... see, Pain, Pain and Game was awesome. I actually liked him in Pain and Game. And even the other, I like, the, the, the fucking small-ass minute that he was in um, the other guys. But it's like... Motherfucker, like, why do you, why do you pick such be- like San Andreas? Really, you, you and your manager were like, okay, here are the fucking choices we got to do. Natural disaster movie. Hey, oh, game fuck was yeah. directed by Michael Bay. Hey. Yeah, it's like just, just you know, but but probably in probably painting games, probably Michael Bay's last great movie. Like, and that's kind of fucked up. I think we like Pain and Gain so much, though, because it takes place in the 90s in Miami, and it's very... It's a mix between Miami Vice and Bad Boys. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, like, there's something deep in our psyche that likes that setting, and... I don't know, but I loved Pain and Gain. I fucking saw it the first weekend it came it out. Was, it was good. I liked it. It was it was nice and messed up. It was pretty fucking crazy. It was it was good. And it's based on a true story. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, was, it was good, man. I liked it. I wish it was on Netflix. <sighs> Oh well. Is Man, it on Netflix? Just... I don't know. I clicked on it. It was. It was for a while, but then they took it off. No, it was. It was on there for three days, and then they took it off. Three days? Good. I'm kidding. It's a. It's a joke. <laughs> oh motherfucker! You got me all worried. And shit. <laughs> <laughs> it's a joke because Netflix only has things on there for a month, and you know that we actually <laughs> want to watch, and it's gone. So yeah. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Bring back Back to the Future. Even though I own it on every format, I still would like to watch it on on my phone when I'm at the gym. Just saying. Someone who loves me got it on Blu-ray for me, so, you know, it's all good. Yeah, my mom I bought me a copy like on seven years ago. <laughs> 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 I was like, hey, I need a Christmas present, Mom. What do you want? Uh, Back to the Future? Okay. I don't have a cool story like you, Dion. Uh, but, uh, but hey, in my defense, it didn't take me like three years to open it up either. Shut so. up. <laughs> <laughs> That's a film move right there. I know, but it was on fucking Hulu and shit. I just watched. It was on 
fucking HBO, I would just watch it. I didn't have to open it. Ah, uh, busting your balls. Bro. I have the original trilogy. Box. Don't you ever Seems... compare me to to my left foot, Phil. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, wasn't he retarded in that movie? <laughs> yeah. Daniel Day Lewis. Daniel Day Lewis. Wait, I, th- I thought I, th- I, th- I, th- I, th- I thought I always thought Phil was retarded in real life. Damn. You would. <laughs> <laughs> You're a harsh man, Nick. Oh, uh, you, you, you don't know the half of it. Actually, you do. You do. <laughs> oh yeah, we, we've talked off there. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so uh, you guys want to do some Patreon stuff? Yeah, let's do it. Sure. Okay, let me uh, pull up some of these questions here. We'll do, let's see. Kendo, you didn't give your question away. Damn it, Kendo. No, I keep forgetting to do that. Well, the last time, I I tried to do it once before. You have one job, sir. One job. I did it one time, and the unwashed masses didn't bother to participate. Then I do it again, and fucking Joel answers it. I'm like, what's the point? Yeah. You know? <laughs> so, um, all right, fine. Here's my Patreon question. Who's going to pass out first tomorrow and when we are doing our uh, horrified, <laughs> evil, <laughs> terrible night, double duty, hatred? Probably, you, you're going to be the gonna first be me. It's going to be me. <laughs> me? I I am planning it's on like laying me, down. Honestly, I'm going to, I'm going to fall asleep and snore into the goddamn like headset I have on right now, and it's gonna be it's gonna be what hilarious. Gonna be <laughs> it's gonna be amazing. First off, first off, I did that one time. Secondly, fucking Phil's was way funnier than mine. Oh yeah, oh yeah. We, we talked about okay, this so last he... night. I've been game planning since yesterday. So, <laughs> was that a way to tie in the Rocks movies, you motherfucker? <laughs> yeah, it was, and that's it's pretty impressive. <laughs> Golf clap, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, this question comes from Andrew Kalen Heights. Would you rather have your own personal gourmet chef for free or have a babbling brook of your favorite beer in your backyard? Ooh, Ooh shit. I'm going to go with personal. Yeah, I'm, yeah I'm going to go gourmet chef as well, yeah. I gotta go with the beer in the backyard, man. I'm gonna take the chef thing because then you could have different things. Whereas if it's the same beer over and over again, you might get tired of it. But if you pick a great fucking beer, no, Dion, you get Miller Lite. That's your. Oh, shut the fuck up! What's up for me, sir? I can't even walk past a Miller Lite display at the store and not think of you. It's like, that, oh, that Dion, means so I am the right person in your life, sir. <laughs> you complete him. <laughs> no, but if I had the uh, gourmet, and I like this question by the way because it's not entertainment related, which is cool because it's a nice respite from Star Wars. <laughs> um, dude, I would if this gourmet chef was free, I would be eating steak and can lobster. We, can, can we have the gourmet chef be a really hot female? Can we have that? Can that be a thing? Yeah. No, it's Guy Fieri. <sighs> oh, God, God. Fuck never you. mind. Change my answer. I'm going to the beer because. <sighs> That's Flavor Town, baby. I, I will All right, lose my gourmet the, chef by the end of the first day when I just fucking beat him to death. That, that's <laughs> funny. He can, he can be my gourmet chef, but like, I, I he can only text me what like what do you want, and I have to text him. I cannot hear his voice. I don't want to see his face. Just cook me this food, put it on the conveyor belt, and give it to me. I don't want to fucking interact. But with you him. want Guy Ferrari to have your fucking phone number? It'll be. It'll, it, I'll have a burner phone. Okay, I'll have a burner phone. Okay, okay, I'm about to say, I was like, cause I, could you imagine that? You wake up on a fucking Saturday morning at 9 o'clock. Hey, it's me, Guy Ferrari, on fucking your phone, Diners and Drives. And here I am again at Speedway eating a fucking hot dog. Like, God damn it, Guy, shut the fuck up. That's <laughs> what <laughs> so I said. Guy, be, guy you're, you're, not a, you're, you're not a Speedway eating a hot dog. You are drunk, naked, and behind the dumpsters blowing somebody. <laughs> I will beat him to death with his fucking rolling pin by the end of the first day. With, with his own shoe? Yeah. <laughs> I had to beat them. No, no. Uh, hey, Jeff, you, you can get that really uh, that really tiny, hot um, female cook that you like a lot. Gianna De Laurentiis? <laughs> oh, my God. You're going to have her. That you would can... be really... <laughs> I would stare down her shirt the whole Dude, time. Dude, you can... Like, yeah, you, 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 can bang, you can bang her and she'll make you food. Oh, my God. I wouldn't even eat most of the time. I'd probably eat her out and then just fall asleep. Wait, who, who is this person? <laughs> I didn't hear what he said. Giada De Laurentiis. Oh, yeah. Vajada, as I like to use to call her. 
<laughs> I used to watch her. Dustin and I would sit in my room in the afternoon and watch her in college. We would stop. I think she was on at three thirty or mm-hmm. four every day. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I would just be like, "Oh, it's time." I don't care what she's cooking. I don't. <laughs> yeah, I I enjoyed Vajada. Her and Nigella Lawson, who has giant tits. Oh man. Oh my god. And a yes. British accent. I think I would actually pick her, like physically over uh, Giada, because big boobs win. Oh yeah. Um. Okay. So another question. Unless you guys have anything else you'd like to add about uh, Guy Fieri living in your house. (laughs) Atlanta's now called Flavortown. (laughs) Population, you. (laughs) No! (laughs) We should do a Twilight Zone-esque skit where it's like you win win a free chef for life, but it's Guy Fieri and slowly your sanity slips from you. And it's like all shot in black and white like a noir. You just make it like fucking... You know what? You know what? Well, you know what happened? I'd be like, "Hey, Gaffieri, cook me a roast with heads in the oven." I just like fucking bash them in there and just like put them in the oven and like turn it on, and then it just, and, and then and then I just slip my wrist with the really nice knives in the kitchen. and We both die. That's how it would happen. No, fuck yeah! You you, you turn it into um just the black like a swan. Plot. Good job. Like, the black swan. <laughs> It's a Black Swan movie where you're just like, you just keep seeing Guy Ferreira and you're sure it's him, but then the end of the movie it's just you and you're just like, who the fuck am I? Like, that would be hilarious. <laughs> I'd watch that and guest star in it. Yeah. Here's the thing, after we make our first movie, Who Killed Phil, a murder mystery, we have about 47 other projects lined up. <laughs> We're going to become filmmakers whether we want oh, to or yeah. not. Nick's just going to be like, I got this. I'm like, all right. Hey, man, it's, hey, I'm telling you, as long as I'm filming, I'm happy. It's it's okay. Oh, don't worry. I got a million and one ideas. Yeah, if we make the first I'm, one and I'm good. market it right, we'll just keep funneling back into that. I'm good, man. I'm good. Until I own a golf course. Just don't own it on the coast because of, you know, like hurricanes and shit. So, yeah. Yeah, what was it, uh, Miralago Bay or whatever Donald Trump was? Yeah. Uh, okay, this was a question from Justin Beck, who's one of our first patrons. Thank you, Justin Beck. Um, um, <laughs> a few more topics. I wish I had a wrestling one in mind just to piss off people like Matt <laughs> Allen. I don't, even uh, think, I don't even think he uh, listens to the show anymore, so whatever. Um here, this is a good one that everyone can answer. What is the worst third installment in a trilogy? Ooh, that's a good question. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, I got a couple I'm going to answer for you tonight, Justin. Mm-hmm. Beverly Hills Cop, Hills Cop 3, three is bad. <laughs> Terminators three, Terminator 3 is bad. Spider-Man 3 is bad. Yeah. yeah. Um, shit. Um, what else? There's a... Uh, uh, fuck. I'm... Um, X Men Three is bad. Actually, yeah, X Men Three is fucking horrible. Austin Powers Three is yeah. bad. Yeah, it's super bad. Um, the third movie in the Cornetto trilogy, I hate at the world's end. That movie was a huge. That that one's bad. The it, in of itself, it wasn't bad, but like compared, compared to the, to other, the ones, other two, yeah, it is letdown. so horrible. It's um, what is it? Day of uh, Day of the Dead is bad. Yep, I agree. Yeah, oh, I love Day of the Dead so much, though. <sighs> Superman three. That's garbage. Uh, Once upon a time in Mexico is bad. Slapshot no, three is not. bad. Shut the fuck up, dude. It's it's bad. Once upon a time in Mexico is a great movie. Desperado Desperado and El Mariachi are way the fuck better. RoboCop three is bad. Yep. Yes. Yes. Two is not much better, but it's still slightly better. Yeah. Uh, oh, Blade, yeah. two, two is Blade way Trinity. Better. Blade Trinity's bad. Blade. Oh, Blade Trinity's fucking garbage. So three is bad. Oh fuck, dude! Oh. Starship Troopers three is garbage as fuck. There's a two. Yeah, yeah that one's two. bad too. They're they're all bad. Do they star Casper Van Dien? The fucking new one, the animated one that just came out, has him in it, and it's not horrible. It's not great either. But two and three is, you know, three is really bad because it's like trying to turn into like a thriller and stuff. It's 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 really shitty. Um, Scream three is bad. If Clark, if Clark three ever gets made, it'll be bad. Uh, How can you use that? Because Clark's two is great. Yeah, but three's gonna suck probably. Just because it ain't gonna. It's not getting made. Good because 
I don't want a Clerks three. Um, Alien three was bad. Uh huh. Yeah, that one's probably the worst one. It's probably worse than four. <laughs> Um, the Matrix, the, uh, the third Matrix is bad. Dude, both, no, dude, so the Matrix two and three sequels, are shitty. The Matrix sequels get shit on unnecessarily. I will fight that to the end. Dion, the only thing I like about the second one is uh, the bush shot from Monica Bellucci. Like I never noticed <laughs> oh, the other day. Right, and now well, I've even watched that. But even like in three, times. she has that crazy, super tight ass red spandex dress on in three. Yeah, but you can't see her bush through it, okay? You've already reached the mountaintop with number two dress. <laughs> Anything else? Oh, a, a I got it. The Godfather part three. There it is. Oh! There's your oh. winner. Winner, winner, chicken dinner right there. That might be the winner, dude. That one, that movie is fucking horrible. What about Triple X 3? I'm sure that's terrible. I haven't yeah, watched it yet. If you compare it to the other Triple X's, I mean... It's, we... it's, it's, it's fucking horrible. Yeah, I mean... Okay, real quick, let's invert that question. Let's name some good third installments in a trilogy. Indiana in, 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 in Jones 3? Lethal Weapon 3? Yep. Um, Return of the Jedi is still good. Yep. I mean, yep. it's Army of Darkness. Darkness. Still... Yes. That's the best one. I think so. That's rare when the, th- when the third movie is the best. Well, yeah, no, I'd agree. Darkness no, I think you're right. It is the too. best one of all those movies because it's, it, it fucking, not only does it change the Die- fucking Die- dynamic of the films, but Ash is a, becomes a fucking crazy uh, ass action uh, hero. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, What'd you say you cut out? Nick. Okay. Nick is gone. We lost our last standing Samoan. Nick, you answer me, you son of a bitch. Don't you fucking give up on me, bitch. Back to the Future 3 is in that weird medium. Like, is it good or bad? See, the only thing about Back to the Future 3 is compared to the first two, it's like meh. But if it was a time travel movie by itself, it wouldn't be that bad. Can you hear me now? That's true. Yes. Yes. Okay. All right. Um, I said, um, uh, "Was it in, um, Die Hard 3. Oh yeah, Die Hard. Oh yeah, for sure, for sure. That that could be argued as the best one, not for me, but I mean, I would listen to that argument from someone. It's it's a damn fine mm-hmm. movie. Episode three is probably the best of the prequels. The well, duh. the good, the bad, and the That's ugly. Not too. Ooh, uh, I I prefer a, for a few dollars more. The second one. Oh, that's a good good one the too. bad, and the ugly is so much better, though. I th- not so much, I, don't I won't so. say so much better. I won't say so much better, but it is probably the best of that trilogy for sure. I think it's too drawn out, and I don't like the character. Um, what's the the guy that's called the ugly in the credits? Not Eli- what's his It's name? Eli Wallach. I'm trying to think of his name. I prefer the Lee Van Cleef Clint Eastwood dynamic from Part Two much more than I'd like the whole drawn out saga of the third one. So that's a t- you know what we'll do those commentaries for the podcast. <laughs> yep, <definitely. laughs> um, how about how about Men in Black Three? That's a good one. I wouldn't say it's the best, but it's not, it's a good third. Installment. Yeah. Oh, we're, yeah. I didn't say the best. Yeah, definitely Men in Black Three. Yeah, Goldfinger's hey, Goldfinger's good. Goldfinger's the third. What'd you say? Goldfinger. Yeah, that's the third installment of a Bond franchise. That could be argued as the best one, actually. Yeah. Not by me. Well, I mean, you know, the third National Lampoon's movie is awesome. It that is, Christmas yeah. Vacation. yeah. Christmas is. Vacation's good. Shitter's full. Is that your favorite one of the National Lampoon's movies? No, Vacation. I like the first one the best. Yeah, I mean, I really like Christmas Vacation, but regular Vacation's top because you see Beverly D'Angelo's tits, and you get to see a moose punched in the face, and St. Louis makes it on the map. Um, a, a, a very Harold and Kumar Christmas 3D. Hey, that was fun. That was fun. That is good. Jackass 3D. Ooh. Yeah, that's really good. Probably uh, the best one of the Jackass movies, all of them. Oh, Captain America Civil War. Oh, that's duh. Yeah, movie. what the fuck? Yeah, totally. That could be argued as the best Captain America movie. That could be the best Marvel movie. Yeah. I'm kind of there. Kind of there. War for the Planet of the Apes was damn good. Ooh. Yes, that was very good. That was phenomenal. Um, um, let's see, Ocean's 13? No, because so, Ocean's 11. I don't know. Ocean's 11. It, it's, a good, it's definitely a good third movie for sure. I wouldn't say it's the best of the of the whole trilogy, but it's definitely a good third one. Yeah, yeah. I guess two was two was dog shit, and one is one is a remake, and I, th- yeah, I thought three was like, at least, at least, at least I came back to it being good again. 
Well, yeah. Plus, you had phenomenal evil Al Pacino, which is just yeah. <laughs> just fun. It's, you just you can't beat that shit. Yeah. What else? That's pretty much. Uh, keep talking about that. I'm gonna pull up the question. That's all our patron questions. So. Brian Lape, start sending in questions, my friend. You're on the Patreon thing. Now, um, I don't have to explain it to people. Never mind. <clears throat> I was going to say, you only, cer- uh, certain tiers get a lot more, but oh well. Um, let me pull up that. I, the third one's kind of hard to think of, like, you know. Yeah. Well, not many movies get that far once you think about it. Yeah, so it's a hard that's a hard uh, level to get to as a franchise because it's you know not many. Well, I mean, it, many... it used to it, it used to be that was the universe three movies. Now it's like how far can we go with this? Yeah, yeah. Keep keep beating that pinata. Well, you know, you have Universal trying to ruin the whole fucking idea of Universal movies. <laughs> yeah, the monsters thing is is never going to work the way they Could want. You, to can you imagine? Could you think of another franchise that was almost ruined with the first movie? Like, no other franchise. Like, this is a franchise with movie number one, and it fucking just collapses so bad. Spawn. Spawn. Yeah. Was Spawn supposed to be a franchise? Everything was meant to be a trilogy. That's a good point. I don't know. I just randomly saw a picture of Spawn on uh, YouTube, and I thought Spawn. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> that movie is so underrated and a product of his time. I will fight for it to the end of the year. No, 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 no. The way you fight for Spawn is the way I fight for Airheads in Detroit. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I, I, I agree with you. Spawn, yeah, Spawn is ahead of, the, ahead of his time. I really enjoyed it too as a kid when I watched it. Like I really liked it. Um, I still, I still enjoy it now. Ooh, the fucking third Universal Soldiers movie. Uh, was it Reckoning? <laughs> How that many of those movies were there? There, there Reckoning. was like there's like four, but the fucking one with uh uh what well, uh Scott Atkins is is a Universal Soldier and he fucking kills Jean Claude Van Damme and Dolph Lundgren. Oh my god, it's fucking intense as fuck. That's a great that's a great third. I think that one's probably the most underrated third movie in a fr- film franchise ever. It's fucking phenomenal. I forgot about the... Batman Forever. We love that one, Beyond. That's true. Oh, my. That's so good. Fucking Val Kilmer, underrated Batman. Bar none. Uh, best song of the Batman series ever. Baby! <laughs> God. I, I want to just, like, adopt that as the world-class bullshitter's theme song, and then when we go to conventions in the future, like, Battle we're just going like, to, like, end all of our live shows with us singing it. <laughs> We'll probably get really drunk tomorrow night and, and sing it as well. Let's be honest. <laughs> yeah, sure. Damn. That could be the that could be our musical interlude. Yeah. <laughs> I kind of want to release like I will be kind of cool for the patrons if I release like the entire recording, like for the higher up tier. So it's like you get like literally from the minute we call each other till the minute it like ends. I don't know. We'll play around with it. You're still getting your goddamn Force Awakens commentary by Saturday, folks. So. Be prepared. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, but like pre- prepare like we will, like drink a lot. <laughs> yeah, just and get a box of tissues and a box of wine. Yeah, Ooh, classy bitches drink box yeah. of wine. <laughs> so this past week on our channel has been really successful. By the way, Nick and uh, Kenda, we actually gained all the subscribers back that we lost. Oh, beautiful! Hey! Awesome. Yeah, so we're almost to five thousand. We're fourteen away from five thousand. Yeah. So hopefully by the time this uploads tonight. Ray. Hit that five thousand mark. These last two videos I put out this week have been really popular. The Art Politics Rooting Entertainment and the uh, Ryan Johnson, not Ryan Johnson, the Colin Trevorrow Star Wars video. I think in the coming week I'm going to release one titled "An Open Letter to Kathleen Kennedy." I've been working on it, and I'm basically going to talk about all of her shortcomings as a producer and the head of Lucasfilm. So, um, if you want a, something a little more intelligently written, watch my single videos. Here I'm bullshitting. They all form opinions and ideas and a thesis and really draw it out. So if you really like that kind of stuff, it'll be here in the coming week. Uh, a lot of people seem to like last week's podcast a lot more than they did the week before, so we're back, I guess. <laughs> that, that's good. So uh, I, I always read my comments from most recent and, you know, later. So first up, Augs for President. He absolutely loved the debate. 
And Augs actually contacted me and said, "Are you guys?" or asked if we're going to do more debates. Maybe, Augs. Maybe we will. Maybe we'll only put them on Patreon. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I can bring back debates. We could shorten the news and go oh, back no, to debates. Don't, 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 don't do that to Augs. He's going to have to get two jobs then. Come on. I know. That, that buck. <laughs> have to sell himself on two streets. For one dollar, <laughs> for one dollar a month, you could feed a starving child in Africa, or you could give it to us. I think you know what the you right feed, choice is. You could feed a bullshitter. Yeah, okay, you could yeah. feed a bullshitter. I think it's more important. I think yeah. that's one giant junior bacon cheeseburger. No wait, shit. Even a regular junior bacon cheeseburger is like a dollar sixty nine. <laughs> so I can get a McDouble. Thanks, Augs. Give me a McDouble. We'll call it a day. Uh, Justin B sixty six ninety nine. Oh man, that debate takes me back to the Superman versus Batman debate. No matter who won the debate, the audience does. Yeah, <laughs> we actually had. Thank a, you, sir. We had so much fun with that debate last week. We really did. Fine, look at listeners. If you liked the debate, just start putting debate topics in the comments section as fast as you can. Because I write the show about Wednesday or Thursday afternoon. So if you can send me as many debate topics as you can. We'll start doing. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah well, the best we'll, debates. What, what'll happen is we, we. What is that? What'll happen? We'll probably do a poll on our Twitter, um, so you guys can vote on what what debate you want us to do uh, for the week's show. Yeah, our social media manager will take care of that. He's a good. We guy. also do it on Facebook. We see that stuff all the time. I yeah, hell, I'll, I'll do it. We'll, we'll, we'll do it everywhere. Else. We'll do it at your house if your mom lets us. Uh, <laughs> neat. Uh, Okay, this person, New York Augs. Huh. If I do say so myself, this is one of the better podcasts I've listened to in my lifetime. They don't participate in society's propaganda, something I greatly appreciate in society these days. Well, thank you, New Wait, York Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. Who's that? Damn, dude. New York Augs? Who the hell is that? What the fuck? It's a picture of a guy with a, a mustache. I'm looking at it. Oh, it's great. Hold on, let me let me click on it to see if it gets any bigger. Is he wearing a monocle? He's, like, he's got a monocle, a fucking curly mustache, and it says New York Augs. He says, I'm New York City Augs. I'm New York Augs, the bigger city Augs. Oh my god! Oh god. What a fucking troll! Oh, I love uh, it. Augs, you have a doppelganger. Yeah, it's gonna be an Augs fight in the comments section. Lay your bets down. <laughs> I, I, I kind of like New York Augs a lot. So, <laughs> Augs for president. Oh, okay. Um, this person, I just want to give them a shout out. Uh, Halo Modder five five five. They wrote me like three pages worth of a time travel thing and how it works. So, out of respect for the other audience members, I'm not going to read it. But Halo Modder, you're going to get a heart and a thank you because. That was well said. But he also said fuck Die Hard at the end, but he was just kidding. So. <laughs> cool. Did he, did, right, did he quote man. any I theories by Einstein? I love you, man. Uh, I love you, man. You could Honestly, you guys could just go watch it, because it would be an all-day... We'll do a drunk commentary just on his, <laughs> his comment. Yeah, tom- tomorrow night after I get drunk, I'll just read it and we'll discuss it. That'll go there on the Patreon, go. too. <laughs> Yeah, we're really we're gonna make these Patreon bonuses like events. Fuck like, yeah, yeah, like extra like, like Star Wars never get. Yeah. Um. Let's see. Joshua Burnett. He seems like a new fan. Welcome. What's wrong with Kathleen Kennedy? You imagine her picking up a dude in a bar, taking him home, gets naked, lets him stick it in, pumping it, then says we parted ways due to creative <laughs> differences. He wanted doggy. I wanted. I wanted fisted. Fuck that bitch. Episode nine. Oh my god, that's amazing. That's awesome. I that like is, that. That is awesome. <laughs> so, um, Josh, Joshua Burnett also says, "Did you guys hear? According to the new toys release, there's another Death Star. Please, God, no." I I have seen that image, but there's a reason I haven't commented on it or made a video. Because if you look closely, it's got old school TIE fighters in the picture, and the new TIE fighters are ugly and gay. <laughs> so I think it's just a mistake. But it, it goes to show you how lazy and uh, stupid Disney is by letting that kind of shit get through. Just saying. Um, <laughs> non linear. I think the first medium blacks were successful and was agriculture. <laughs> damn. Wow. Yeah, damn is right. Woo, that is a sharp one. Good job. Thumbs up. Um, 
Ride the Lightning. Any chance you guys will ever review any no. anime? If no. So Berserk 1997 is one to review. No. Um, probably not, because anytime we talk about video games or anime, we get a bunch of thumbs down and people don't come to the video, so... I don't, if enough people requested it, I could talk about Lupin the Third or something, or Golgo Thirteen because I like those and they're just like James Bond but animated. So, yeah, nothing else. Sorry, Dragon Ball Z maybe. Why just no, to watch Dion suffer. He hates <laughs> Dragon Ball Z. I do, and plus, like hearing that, we know that fucking Dustin just fucking cried in his pillow with us saying no. So, <clears throat> you know, whatever. I can imagine Dustin like laying like bunched up in the fetal position, crying, his wife comes in, what's wrong? They won't review anime! Those <laughs> bastards! And then he just, like, walks out into the garage and shoots I already him. had to quit the show. <laughs> <laughs> they don't take my advice. <laughs> they won't let me look at their dicks either. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Anthony Perez. It would be would be glorious if the subtitle for Star Wars was The Last Episode instead of The Last Jedi. That would be uh, hilarious. I would be very happy with that. Oh, indeed. Let's see. Kate Marie was asking us about the Snoke toy to have a new Death Star picture in it. Yes, we saw the picture, but have you seen the, the even shittier thing that it's the life-size BB-8 playset that opens up into Snoke's base and it looks just like Starkiller base? So if you guys are hoping for a diversity in set decoration, episode eight's going to give you the same old shit. Wow, wow. She also says that Disney has put this franchise in the toilet. Couldn't agree more. Yeah. I hate how they have ruined something that was timeless. I was thinking for episode eight, what if there was a battle of the First Order and the New Republic, or whatever it's called, and the twist is the OG Empire jumps out of hyperspace led by a clone of old Palps, and then the First Order and New Resistance have to join forces to take down the Superior Empire. That'd be a surprise twist. But see, the, but see, but see that right. sounds too awesome and too good for them to do that, and it's not going to happen. And then Darth Vader from an alternate timeline comes in. Oh my that God. would be amazing! Kate, Kate Marie, thank you for listening, but now you're getting my hopes up for something that'll never happen. <laughs> It's like Spider-Man appearing in the first Avengers. It just didn't yeah. happen. I, I can't get over that, though. Uh, let's see. Jill Hastings, Die Hard wins. Fuck you, Jill. Thanks, Jill. <laughs> Turk, I don't know if this guy is a troll or somebody that actually listens to the show. T-R-K-O-B-Y. Fucking clickbait thumbnail when you guys hardly talk Star Wars at all. Rip on it, but you should talk about it more if it's the fucking thumbnail. Uh, last time I checked, the first thing we talked about was Luke Skywalker's <sighs> book, Force Friday. It's almost all we talked about. Li- 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 listen here, motherfucker. Go through, I, I know it's really difficult for you to do this because, you know, you probably a millennial and don't know how, like, in your attention span is, like, three seconds long. But if you go to the top of our page and click videos and look at all of our thumbnails that have Star Wars on them, we do talk about Star Wars. We talk about Star Wars in this episode, the last one and the last one before that. <laughs> So, um, take time out of your busy day and, you know, you Snapchatting your fucking dick everywhere and listen to our <laughs> fucking show! <clears throat> yeah! What? God, God damn Nick it! Said. I'm tired of this shit, Angry man. I'm Nick fucking tired of this shit. Oh, it's clickbait. Fuck you! I made good on everything. You, like, this week's we, title we make good. We make good on it, it's the first we make thing good we on it all the time. These people are just want more of it. You want more of it, pay, pay us for it and we'll do more of it. If you, if you have a $20... Uh, Patreon, um, you know, we'll we'll talk about whatever the fuck you want. I will read you the script of Star Wars for twenty five dollars. <laughs> yes, month, so. we will do that. Hell, and I'll do the sound effects. <laughs> <laughs> I'll play. Oh I'll, my god! I'll, play, I'll, 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 I'll do the voice of Vader and Chewbacca at the same time. <laughs> will you wear a gold bikini? Uh, yes, I will. That's a requirement. <laughs> yeah. It's in my contract. See, listeners. Are in it. But I did say to this guy, we have a thousand, we have a thousand plus hours of Star Wars content available. Click through the channel to find more. Someone gave that a thumbs up. Thank you. That, that was person. me. Oh, damn it! I wish you would have told oh. me. That wasn't me then. Yeah. Uh, tap and die. I've always loved Lego, but fuck paying eight hundred dollars for an aluminum falcon. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell is an aluminum falcon? <laughs> and then the action brick. Says tap and die compared to most other Lego sets, eight hundred dollars for a seventy five hundred piece set is actually pretty generous. I'm a Lego fan, so I know about good price apart ratio. Good... Yeah, 
Let me let me do the math on well, this. <laughs> well, you may you may be a Lego fan, but you're probably not a vagina fan. Damn. Oh. Well, the thing is, the action brick. I'd like to say this: when you license Star Wars, how much do you pay in licensing fee to Disney and Lucasfilm? A fuckload. If you weren't wow. The Action Brick is like a big toy channel that I guess watches us because I made fun of Star Wars toys. I don't know. Yeah. I I like the Lego movie, but I have no interest. I own two Lego sets. Spider-Man and Back to the Future. Anyway, back to the comments. Oh yeah, Action Brick. Hook me up on some Marvel Legends. I'll pay. I just don't want to pay more than retail. <laughs> uh, Kylo Ken. The only thing positive about Star Wars Episode 7 and the upcoming Episode 8 is the possibility of Chewie hitting that Mary Sue ass and making a powerful <laughs> Wookiee human hybrid baby. Hashtag Subaka. <laughs> <laughs> of whom everyone else can properly nickname Dirty Harry. <laughs> That's great. Uh, God. Once again, a good idea that Rage. will never fucking happen. Raging Alcoholic. This show is going to be huge. Yeah, Reggie Alcoholic. It's only going to be huge if you share us on every on every piece of social media that you're on. Also, Eve Laura, Eve La Renaissance. Why do I want to keep saying Eve Laura? This stuff. Yeah. Oh, Eve no, Laurent. Hey, yeah, Eve Saint Laurent glasses. Anyway, she says <laughs> huge like Donald Trump. So huge, like, huge Laurent. Huge. Uh, Atomic Fire seventy six seventy six. Does your VHS copy of T two have a fitness? Oh, sorry, have that fitness is feeling great PA before the movie starts? <laughs> I don't know because I, I own it on DHS. I just never watched it. <laughs> I bought it like years ago for a quarter. Oh, man. Um, let's see. Jinx97. I'm already preparing for when Luke dies. Kathleen Kennedy is trying to kill all the male cast. Yeah. Yet Princess Leia couldn't make it in real life. Damn. Savage hey, you know, Jeff. That's my favorite you, action you figure. Know, you know my feelings on Carrie Fisher. All the respect in the world for Princess Leia. But she partied hard, dude. It, it had to catch up with her. <laughs> That's like when Phil's foot falls off. Like ah, You knew it was coming. Yep. You can't do cocaine for 45 fucking years and expect <laughs> to come out scot-free. Shit's it, gonna kill you. So true. So true. She fucking she fucking bet against the house. She was she, so she, she went out, she went out like a G though. <laughs> yeah, you and you know goddamn well Carrie Fisher fucking knew that shit too. Oh yeah, she, she's she, like she, I'm gonna I'm gonna die before the second movie comes out. It's like I'm yeah, just, I'm just, I'm just not gonna tell them at all. Oh. oh yeah, she fucking knew it. She partied hard. That's you are the true rock star of our generation, Carrie. Um, yeah, I, I love I, reach... I, I love when she died and they had the talks report and it's like all these drugs. I was like, that's it? <laughs> that's all you found? Seriously. <laughs> See, like, like there was no Star Wars fan or even fan of pop culture that was just like, I am so surprised right now. None of us said that shit. We were like, yeah, she was a functioning addict at this point. <laughs> like, she was clearly still using shit. Like, clearly. Um, okay. okay. I'm going to stop reading the comments. We're going to go to our email. So, if I didn't read yours, I apologize. <laughs> we got a weird email. I don't know if this is real or not, but I'm probably not going to respond to it. Business Inquiry, World Class Bullshitters. Hey, is this the best email to contact you at regarding your YouTube channel? Thanks. Nicholas Lee, Talent Partnerships. Uh, I don't know if I trust this. <laughs> <laughs> probably not. I would I would Google it and see if it's real. It's real. I'm on their website. I, I just have no interest in uh, signing away anything from the channel. I'm willing to sell out. Why did Brian Lib give us like a fucking play by play? <laughs> I don't know. Oh, because oh I asked him God. to. I hope he continues to do that. that, that, that that's like awesome, but it's just like, holy shit, that is, a, that is dedication like fucking crazy. He has nothing else to do. Uh, thank you, Brian. <laughs> Oh, okay, here we go. Bob Smithy. The attached document is a rundown of what I heard from the panelists at some Star Wars panels at Dragon Con. Oh, nice. Do you think you can read it on your next podcast? It's not too long, just one page of text. Maybe Kennedy was at one of those panels. 
Yeah, and at one of your yeah, Nick did go to Dragon Con. Let me click on this. Yeah, but I was way too fucked up to go to a panel. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. I'm just saying, like, I had a flask of whiskey and a joint, so like, I was I was good to go. <laughs> Dude, when we go to Comic Con under the world class bullshitters banner, you got to stay sober for at least the first hour. Oh, well, one hour? Okay, I, I I can handle an hour. That's fun. I can do an hour. Dude, I can just tell you right now. I can promise all of our listeners right the fuck now. If that shit ever happens where it's world-class bullshitters, Nick, Jeff, and myself will definitely be fucking fucked up. And then, and then Kendo's gonna do it because we're doing it. And then you'll have fucking Phil, well, why can't I go? I'm like, bitch, you ain't one of the fucking horsemen, son. (laughs) Your foot's fake. Get out of here. Get the fuck out of here. (laughs) You must have this many feet. Hold up two fingers to be a... Part of this trip, <laughs> and then we'll just fucking we'll just we'll just make fucking dust and drive us around and complain about shit. We'll be like, bitch, we getting fucked up on this fucking. Did you guys see that cosplayer of Superman? I could see his dick, like just dumb shit like that. <laughs> <laughs> well, here's go go blow him and, and get some cocaine for us, right? Just just go. <laughs> okay, now I'm gonna, read, the hotel, I'm gonna read bitch. <laughs> I'm gonna read Bob's. Uh, text one because Bob took the time to email us, so thank you, Bob. And two, it actually yeah, he uh, he hit me up on Twitter. Uh, um, I think after Dragon Con, he's like, "Can I email this to him?" I'm like, "Yeah, dude, go ahead." That's pretty crazy that we have like fans that go to conventions and tell us shit. Thank you, Bob. Makes me feel important. <laughs> so he says, "Hey guys, this is a rundown for my experience at Dragon Con 2017 regarding the Star Wars panels." I will paraphrase what each person said about the new films because I don't remember the statements word for word. On Friday, I saw Daniel Logan, who played young Boba Fett from Episode 2, and Peter Mayhew, who played Chewbacca. Mr. Mayhew said, At the end of The Force Awakens, Chewie should have been the one consoling Leia about Han. It's death, not Rey. That's right. They fucked that up. But what do I know? I'm just an actor. (laughs) Well, Chewbacca has infinite wisdom, according according to this. So, Um, (laughs) On Saturday, I saw Star Wars authors Timothy Zahn, Kevin J. Anderson, E.K. Johnston, Delilah S. Dawson and Claudia Gray. Someone asked Mr. Zahn and Mr. Anderson if they were mad about Star Wars blowing away the expanded universe's canon. Kevin Anderson's face brightened and said, Why don't you tell us how you really feel? Everyone laughed. Timothy Zahn spoke up and said, We didn't really expect J.J. Abrams to read through dozens of books and other stories to prepare for one film. Disney could have completely done away with all of our work, but chose to put it under the title of Legends. We are all thankful for that. It's not like they threw us away. Our stories are considered as legends of that galaxy. And that's that's too PR, if you ask. Yeah, me. That's, that's, like, really, hey, that, right that's really PR. No, I think that's yeah, smart on his part because he's especially for those who read the books. You know, that's that's them saying, "Bitch, you know our stories are better." Plain and simple. <laughs> like, like I'm not saying he's Timothy I'm not Zahn, saying he's wrong for defending himself. Well, all I'm saying, you know, my whole thing is, you know, Timothy Zahn and Kevin J. Anderson are by far the two best the two best authors for the fucking Star Wars books. Like that shit is phenomenal. And for them, Why I'm saying they? them saying that I'm just like, you know, they know that especially that fucking JJ Abrams bit of shade he threw, they know it. They fucking know it. Why wouldn't they just instead here's the thing. I always talk about the narrative of making a movie as opposed to making the movie. Instead of getting Lawrence Kasdan back to write em- or this movie just because he worked on Empire and Jedi, why not get these two dudes who actually kept up with Star Wars forever since they were a part of it right. and let them write it and in in line with that? Instead of having J.J. Abrams read these fucking books, why not just get the, the you're Disney, you can afford anything. Just get the people that Jeff, get it and come Jeff, together. you're making way too much <laughs> sense right now and I don't like it. Uh, just don't, you know, at this point, like I said, <laughs> like at this point, we should just expect the worst from Star Wars. Like just, you know, because see, see, and that's the thing that right there, if you wanted to make real money on a movie, that is 100 percent what the fuck you would do. I'm still because I'm, 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 who, I'm the, who the fuck else? To, to, to write you a story for a movie than the motherfuckers who wrote some of the best uh, novels in the universe. But no, it's Disney being Disney. So there is literally, you know, it, 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 for them to say that right now, because they know, fucking Disney's just like, God damn it, we should have did what the fans said in the first fucking place. You know, fuck him. Fuck him, dude. Fuck him. Well, 
Well, hold on. There's a little more that Bob wrote. So on Monday, I went to the Star Wars counseling panel. The whole panel was set up so that people could come forward with grievances about anything Star Wars related. I should have been an all day event. Oh, I I would have had a fucking list, and I would have go. I would have went complaint one. Uh, I was point yeah. I, I was I, I was in recovery mode, man. Ray, and why she's a Mary Sue. Point B. I'm not sorry. That's a very <laughs> anyway. Um, the panelists would come forward and try to make people feel better. The panelists were Joseph Scrimshaw, host of the Star Wars Podcast Force Center, C. Robert Cargill, author, screenwriter, podcaster, and former film critic from Ain't It Cool News, Audrey Kearns, writer, actor, producer, founded the website Geek Girl Authority, and Ken Plune, writer, co-host, podcast, and runs Fred Entertainment website. I had a feeling that this panel would tear into people who did not like The Force Awakens, but they were all very fair with the grievances involving the film. I was first in line to state a grievance, and how I had many, or sorry, and I had many, but I only had time for one. I began with saying that the hype around the movie built Kylo Ren up to be a, what looked like a formidable foe for the heroes, but when the film finally came out, I was disappointed to see how weak he was. He seemed like a badass character in the beginning and then turned into a pushover as the film went on. I also stated that the lightsaber battle at the end had zero tension since Rey had become so powerful with the Force in such a short time. They all responded one at a time, and once again, I will paraphrase. Kylo Ren is unique in the way that he was not a very badass character, but a wannabe. He throws mad fits because he's like a child with powers and has very little control over his emotions. We have the next film to Then why the fuck is the villain? Mr. villain? God damn it! <laughs> I just, I can't deal with this, man. Fuck you, Star Wars. I can't deal with this yeah. I'm, sorry. I'm sorry. It's all it's all PR and corporate speak, but uh, there's still more. Another person in line stated how he was upset Disney axing the expanded universe. The panelists responded, but one statement stood out for me was what Robert C. Cargill C. Robert Cargill said. If you love the expanded universe, then the canon is alive in you. You consider those stories important and Disney can't take that away. Oh yeah. There were a number of other things discussed in these panels regarding the Force Awakens, but this is all I can remember. Bob Smithy. Well, Bob, like I said, thank you. I really hope one of those panels is at a convention we work at, because we're just gonna all get in line. Dude, you guys, no, no, you you guys are more than welcome to to come and stay with me and go to Dragon Con. Honestly, the only thing I ask of is that we all dress like Ghostbusters, the original ones. Done. That's that's all. Oh, I'm Ernie Bar Bar none. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Don't worry, the way the Patreon's growing and this channel growth is happening, we will be able to do conventions. Yeah. It won't be that bad. I can. I think I can get us press passes for a lot of this shit. I just don't know who to contact. Uh, you have to go through the go through the convention, probably like contact me or whatever, and like email them way ahead of time and be like, yeah, can we get press passes and see what the procedure is for that? That's it. All right, cool. Then I'm going to start doing that. I really wish I would have done it for the Cincinnati Comic Expo, but... That's like in two weekends, so... I mean, you know, yeah, just just start looking at them and start asking them questions and see what happens, man. The the worst thing they say is no. That's it. It's true. We're in the same spot we are yeah. now. We have one more email from Kaylin Webb. You and the fellows are an inspiration. Like many, YouTube recommended your channel's Star Wars Episode Seven rant vid to me, and I was hooked. Subbed about a month ago, and I am better for it. WCBS is the only podcast I listen to. Thanks for giving up your Thursday evenings to entertain. B.S. How do you request a monthly topic for intermediate patron supporters? Um, just send in uh, a thing and we'll make it happen. Just you know, shoot me messages over Patreon. Put it like this. You guys can't send too many messages over Patreon. They go to my phone, I get to see them, and it's easier for me to keep track of shit if you constantly remind me. It's not going to annoy me. So just if you got ideas, just message me through Patreon. It's the best way for me to never lose a message. And this dude must really love our channel because, or Kalen Webb, but this thing said Andrew Kalen Webb. Huh. I don't want to... Well, we're just going to go with Kalen Webb, the person who loves our channel. Thank you very much, and uh, we'll read your questions. Don't worry. We got you covered. Do you guys have anything else you'd like to say before we put this baby to bed? Fuck Star Wars. <laughs> Fuck Disney. Huh? Fuck them all. Do we have any twit or tweets? Uh, not really. I mean, basically, Lem Green Hulk and No Divots have been like messaging me back and forth about Star Wars stuff and uh, things like that. Okay. Yeah. But I, I'm, I'm keeping up and I'm answering them and I'm trying to, you know, 
talk to them all the time and stuff, so. Oh, wait. Sorry, this... Wait, this... Sorry, this just... The person's name is throwing me off. Are they... There's Andrew Kalen Heights, and then there's this Kalen Webb. Is that the same person? I guess it has to be. I don't know. I'm, I'm reading too much into it. Just tell us who you are. I feel really bad all of a sudden. Um... I feel they sent me a message. I don't care. Um, <laughs> so... Oh yeah, sorry, that sounded harsh. It's late. And it's probably not relevant. So, this has been episode 88 of World Class Bullshit. Every Thursday night, we take a dump on the world of pop culture. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, just move on along. Also, we're over on Patreon. So, if you really like this channel and you'd like to see us grow... Um, there's always a link in the description and on our YouTube homepage. You can join us and get all kinds of great digital content starting Saturday. Tomorrow we're going to record it. Saturday, I'm going to regret it. <laughs> um, <we're laughs> yeah, I'm dreading it so bad, dude. Like from tomorrow at this time, we've already watched The Force Awakens. I'll be fucking, I'll be barely like, I don't know, intelligible, and it'll just be, I don't know. Then, then Ghostbusters. Oh, oh. God. Yeah, fuck me, right? Fuck all of us. Uh, where was I in this speech, though? Oh, share this video. Tell people. Spread the word. If you're a fan of world-class bullshitters, the best thing you can do if you can't help us out financially is just to spread the word because more eyes means more views, and we can grow the channel, and we can give you more content. Um, what else? We're on Facebook. We're on Twitter. We're on Instagram. I, we technically have a Snapchat, but Phil doesn't use it, so we're not on I Snapchat mean, you could anymore. you could make your own and give me the code, and I'll post it everywhere. I'm what just saying. saying. I use Snapchat a lot. I can do that. All right, because what would I snap? I don't know, man. You Dog snap pictures. <laughs> That's, I mean. I don't know. You working on. You, we you, only, only have a 5% female audience. You, I don't want to take a risk of alienating I don't know, 95% you, of our you, audience. You working on stuff for the channel, like designing things, drawing. I don't know. Just. I don't know, man. <laughs> Maybe they can. Uh, I'll send Snapchat uh, short clips of me watching Italian Beaver. There you go. Yeah, that works. Yeah, yeah. Just, 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 just give me the code for it, and I'll, I'll put it everywhere, man. Augs for president can't watch it. He's yep. too young. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, well. Augs would suggest you don't, but you know, we're not your parents. Yeah, we'll, we'll censor it with a monocle and a mustache <laughs> for him. <laughs> Um, you guys have anything else you'd like to add? Or are we just going to end this right now? Yeah, dude. No, sir. All right. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. It was a lot of fun. We'll be back next week with episode 89, and we're on our road to episode 100. Um, depending on when we would reach 100, if it would be at the end of December, we're just going to hold it off till early January after the holiday where we can all get back together. So... It's a, it's a while away, but still, it's something to keep in the back of your mind. So, if episode 99 drops before Christmas Eve or something, and then all of a sudden it's like, oh, I can't wait for 100 next week, he'd probably be waiting two or three weeks. So, whatever, that's neither here nor Episode there. 100 um, would come out on December 1st. Oh, shit, then yeah, <laughs> then Ignore the last two minutes of me talking. We'll see you on December 1st with episode 100. <laughs> <laughs> oh, also, we're going to, uh, we'll start up a thing over on the Facebook page. Episode 100 will be our biggest episode yet. We'll get everybody, well, not everybody that's ever been on the show. We'll get some people that have been on this show. Maybe we'll do a little fan section that I'll record earlier. We'll just make it, like, the best episode we possibly can. And we might even talk about Star Wars, but that doesn't happen too often, so I can't promise anything. We'll, we'll be getting close to that episode 8 release date, so it's probably going to come up. <gasps> oh, fuck. Um, I've been your host, Jeff Fix. I am the man with the plan and the original fucking tan. Dean Green. I've uh, been your last inning small and saying pre order Franken Thug. Uh, Where can we pre order it at? Uh, Abuckshort.com. Uh, if you send me that link, I will put that in the description. I will do that right now. Cool. I've been Kendo Slice. I like my women like I like my coffee. Dark, strong, and illegally traded. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was going to be grown up and put it in the, in the fridge. No. Subversive joke. I see what you did there. Anyway, folks, thanks for watching. We'll be back next week. And for those who listen to us on Podbean, Stitcher, and iTunes, here's a song. <laughs>